This is probably going to be a very long one, but I hope you're going to stick with me for it. So grab some snacks. Welcome in. Hey Spuds, it's Jamie. Welcome back to another video, your first video on the channel. I don't know, but welcome either way. And today we are looking at something very interesting. And it's something that I may seem slightly late to the party on because I film in advance. But I don't think it's ever too late to call out some transphobia and react to a transphobe's arguments just falling apart. It's always magical to see. And today what we're doing is having a little look at the highlights of a podcast episode that Ollie London appeared on. Now, if you don't know who Ollie London is, good for you. But also, just as a quick introduction, Ollie London is somebody who has transitioned in the past and been very open about having surgery to look like a K-pop star. And I now believe he has detransitioned and is spreading a lot of transphobia online and just really not saying very nice things at all about trans people. And he recently, well, maybe not so recently now, but you know, he he recently appeared on a podcast on H3 Productions with Ethan Klein. What I wanted to do is watch the highlights of the podcast episode that Ollie London appeared in because apparently his transphobia got destroyed and I would like to react to just how destroyed it got and see if there's anything I can add or just watch it with you and react to it with you. So yeah, I hope you're going to enjoy this and enjoy the long video. I wish I could send you some popcorn. Hi Ethan, how's it going? Hello, Ollie. Nice to see you. I like your outfit. Very French with the hat. Oh, thank you so much. And you, I think you look wonderful, too. We're kind of doing the same thing with our hats, aren't we? Well, first of all, thank you for coming on. I understand you're promoting a book entitled Gender Madness, which comes out August 1st. So congratulations. Mm -hmm. This is your first book. Also, uh, you wanted to announce that you're the new spokesperson for Fairness First PAC, Caitlyn Jenner's organization, who famously ran someone over. But that's actually not the most important thing about Caitlyn Jenner. Um, yeah, so basically I've got a new book coming out um, <laughs> August 1st. And basically that a lot of people lot. have, you know, obviously followed my journey over the years. And um, obviously I've struggled a lot with identity and I had some very unhealthy behaviors, basically mm. due to my addiction to surgery, my body dysmorphia, which later turned into gender dysphoria. So I really struggled with that. And it was unhealthy. And, you know, I completely accept my past. You know, I don't try to deny the person I was and you know I had some kind of bizarre behaviors basically right. in an attempt to feel validated and to try and you know feel loved because I really resented so I, I want to get I into all those things um okay I'm, I'm really interested in your journey from you identified as a trans woman right and mm. then and then you kind of found God and pivoted to becoming a uh, white British Christian man is that do I have the synopsis correct <laughs> yeah it sounds complicated but yes yeah, so I'm back to being myself now and like finally found happiness mm -hmm. okay okay I think this is why detransitioners always pose as like a gotcha to the trans community because the detransitioners we often hear about are the ones that then go off and start saying transphobic things or align with people who are gender critical and TERFs and things like that but really at the end of the day trans people don't have an issue with other people like going on their own journeys and finding themselves and if transitioning isn't right for somebody that under 1% that it's not right for then that's okay but that's not really the journey that Ollie London has taken. So are you do you, do you still identify as gay? Um, yes. So I'm still gay, okay. but I have dated girls before, and you know, I, I still. So you're I'm bisexual, kind of more bi. I guess. Or, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. And uh, you don't identify as Korean anymore. Oh, no, correct. Obviously. And then, and then, so you, are you pro gay rights? Yeah, absolutely. You, you know, I'm, I'm part of the LGBT community. I support people. Um, my issue is just what's happening to children, and also the erosion of women's rights. That is literally like transphobic trope number one. Oh, I'm not actually transphobic. I support rights. I just don't like what the trans community and what's happening with the children and women's rights, blah blah blah, and like women's rights being impeded on by the trans community. I do think some people genuinely believe what they're saying and they believe the messages they're given by other transphobes but it's honestly just all lies and at the end of the day when you dig into it it's just somebody who's transphobic and it's being used as an excuse you know i fully support um people as an adult making an informed decision to change themselves but i don't support children being medically transitioned so you do support trans people in gender uh, in general so absolutely so i support you know people as an adult making a decision if they want to change and they're happy with that. But I feel that unfortunately the trans movement has been hijacked by a small but growing group of trans activists, which are basically pushing kind of um, an erosion of women's rights. So 
that's what I really take an issue with. There's a lot of trans people. I have a lot of trans friends. I know what it's like to be trans. I have a lot of trans friends. I know what it's like to be trans. So I'm not transphobic. What is it? Like he flitted between like talking about children being medically transitioned, which isn't even something that's happening. So I don't know why people are getting all like, ah, about something that's not happening. And then flip to women's rights. But there's no real explanation of either yet. I mean, we are only a few minutes in, but you can't just be like, oh yeah, no, like if you're an adult, you do whatever. It's kind of that do what you want with your life but there's that underlying feeling of not really agreeing with it and then like mm, a small minority eee. that really just want to live their lives and they're actually having a tough time now because of these trans activists so my issue is with trans activists and not actual trans people okay so you say here's a tweet of yours from just the end of last month not that long ago you say the goal of the trans movement is not simply to exist the goal is to erase women mutilate children, sexualize kids, take away free speech, class pedophilia as an identity, uh, remove parental rights, indoctrin indoctrinate kids, and they're willing to do violence to obtain their goals. When you say the trans movement, it seems to me that you are speaking generally about trans people uh, having this goal. And when you say trans movement, I don't know exactly what you mean, because it seems that most trans people that I've seen, maybe with the exception of Caitlyn Jenner, seems to uh, disagree with this, seems to identify as being a part of the trans movement. What is the trans movement? Who is a, who is a member of that? What is this organization? So what, okay, so what I'm talking about here is the trans movement in the, in the trans activist movement, so the people pushing these ideologies. So we see every single day, just yesterday, the Texas state capitol was uh, invaded. The trans protesters went there. We see women being attacked at women's rights rallies, physically attacked, and we're seeing this trans activist movement pushing um, for gender affirming care on kids, which is basically putting 11, 12 year old kids on very harmful hormones. So that's what I'm talking about. When I talk, I'm not generalizing every single trans person. I'm talking about the current trans movement, which has been hijacked by trans activists. That just feels like a smokescreen. It just feels like a, oh no, like I'm not that bad. It's just like the extreme people that I don't like. When the things he's describing is like protests to stand up for trans rights. And like in many states, they're trying to or have taken away gender affirming care for under 18s. For children, gender affirming care is socially transitioning and counseling and just talking about things then maybe puberty blockers as they reach like early teen and then hormones later. Okay, right. No, I really think that trans people that have been living as a trans person their whole life, they need to speak out against this because the problem is that the LGBT community is being hijacked by these well, that, uh, radical let, let people. Let me ask, uh, sorry, I don't want to cut you off, but I just want to mm -hmm. address things you said already, right? So you say mm -hmm. that the uh, people who are demonstrating at the Texas Capitol are part of this trans movement who wants to, you know, sexualize kids and this whole uh, list of things. They were there to protest a bill, SB 14, that would ban gender related treatment for minors. So um, these guys are, I guess, see that as an affront as being transphobic. But uh, you disagree because what is minor? Anyone 17 and under? Do you believe that ever there would be a 17 year old that needed gender affirming care? Um, so minor is basically classified anyone under 18. And what these people were protesting against was the fact that Texas is trying to pass a law to ban um, hormones and puberty blockers and gender reassignment surgery being administered to children, basically. So, you know, I think these people, firstly, you know, that was an unlawful protest. You can't just go into a state capital and do that. You Are know, you and if they want to have a different are you in favor of only lawful protests? Well, I think, you know, people need to follow the law. And if they want to have a protest, they can have that dialogue. But outside the state house, you can't just storm in a state house. I mean, it's comparable to January 6th when people stormed the Capitol, which was unlawful as well. So I think, you know, these people were not protesting about their rights being taken away. It's the fact that they were protesting against a bill that would have actually protected children. So I think that's really harmful. How does taking away the evidenced correct medical treatment protect anybody? The bill would take away access to gender affirming care for minors, so under 18s, but that is the evidenced way that you should treat gender dysphoric like, and trans kids with gender affirming care, and children are not receiving surgery or hormones. It can sound very scary when somebody's posing it in ways that are 
just factually incorrect. When in reality, this is a healthcare method, the backing of all the major medical boards has a super amount of evidence behind it to show that this is what we should be doing. Trans people should be receiving gender affirming care. So when gender affirming care is threatened to be taken away, trans people protest that it should not be taken away. Some would say that uh, it's actually harming kids, right, to make it illegal to do this because as as you probably know, or I think you did mm -hmm. at one point, is that uh, gender affirming care on people, on children, is exceedingly rare. It's actually so rare that it's, um, it's it, if to express like irreversible gender changes on children is something like, you know, uh, I've got the number here. 0.000493% of U.S. children aged 6 through 17 go through irreversible gender uh, changes. So I, I guess I'm just curious, because in, in the cases where they do undergo it, it's usually uh, to save their life, right? And they go through, like, panels, they go through multiple rounds of talking to psychiatrists and doctors. So I guess I'm just curious, why is it you think that this is threatening kids instead of actually helping kids who are at high risk. That is such a tiny, tiny number, six through 17. Just to clarify as well, it will be that older age range only that would have access to irreversible things. So Ethan, about 10 years ago, when gender affirming uh, care was performed on, whether that was minors or adults, there was a lot of checks and balances now it has become so easy. So they don't have the psychiatrist appointments anymore. They don't have, you know, having to wait several years to transition. Now it's a very fast track process. And that's the real issue because many of these teens, and we're seeing thousands of teens uh, being transitioned and put on hormones. The number's really gone up in the last few years. Just jumping in there, the way that he's phrasing it, like, are being transitioned, it just feels like this attempt to make it sound like it's not within the trans people's control, what they're doing. They're being forced into this. They are being forced to transition. I don't know if that was the intention, but that's just like, the wording is all kinds of like, mm, to me. Also, yes, we have seen an increase in trans people getting referrals and receiving gender affirming care. That's because there is an increase just in society of knowledge of the existence of being trans and trans people find out they're trans by finding out that being trans exists and being given the language to explain how they feel. That's what happens. It's just like the whole left-handed graph. I think like, I hope that comes up at some point when left-handedness stopped being stigmatized so much. We left-handedness magically went up. Not more left-handed people in the world, just more people being able to be left-handed. Same thing is happening with trans people. This fast track thing, I have never heard of this. The only things I've ever heard about gender affirming healthcare anywhere is that it's really difficult to access and it's getting harder and harder. Like for example in the UK it is harder and it takes longer to transition now than it did when I transitioned 12 years ago. That doesn't really correlate with Ollie saying it's getting easier and people being fast-tracked. There's a, a high case um, around one in six of these children have autism they're being misdiagnosed. There's also kids with depression, bipolar, and they're being told it must be, all of these issues must be because they're in the wrong gender and they are being fast-tracked. Um, there was a case in Missouri at the St. Louis um, Children's Hospital and basically a whistleblower unveiled that they only required like one session with a therapist to get a child on hormones and puberty blockers. So that's the issue when a system is being exploited. And you know, there's been trans people forever throughout history. There's there's so many examples of trans people. But the thing is now is, you know, previously, as difficult as it was, because it's so hard when you're trans to struggle and to think every day that I'm trapped in the wrong body. It is horrific to go through that. But the problem is, you know, years ago, they would have two to three years they would have to undergo of psychiatrist appointments, doctor's appointments in order to qualify for a transition. Now it has become so easy and there are thousands of kids being fast tracked and put on hormones prescriptions. And some kids can now go to states um, like Colorado or Washington state, which have become sanctuary states. And they don't I, I want to I want to actually them. address what you said about um, you had said something about Jamie Reed's allegations. Mm. Right. But th that was debunked. Right. Because the parents and the uh, the children there who actually were uh, attending that facility actually told a completely different story. Have you read their account of that? Yes. Yeah, so I saw okay. recently that the they did an internal investigation. They said it wasn't true. But you no, know, I don't oh, that, believe well, that. Well, that seems significant. Uh, yes, but I don't so believe do you, that at all because right, you don't they're trying to cover the, their back. You don't believe the internal investigation. 
No, because there were multiple parents when the Daily Caller originally did the interview with Jamie Reid, there were multiple parents that said basically their kids weren't looked after. Once they left the clinic, there were no checks and balances and there were parents confirming that. So, you know, I believe the investigation has a lot of bias because so, it's done by the clinic and they're profiting. So the cl so the internal investigation said uh, there was no uh, there was no wrongdoings. The patients said there was no wrongdoings. So I guess I'm just curious, uh, the people who are claiming that there was something wrong there is like the Daily Caller, Tucker Carlson. Are you are you saying that they don't have a bias? Well, I mean, a lot of people have a bias and stuff. But, you know, we have to look at these gender clinics as a whole. Project Veritas exposed multiple clinics the other day of talking about medically transitioning eight to 11 year olds. So we have to acknowledge that this is going on in a lot of clinics and a lot of these clinics are trying to cover their backs by trying to paint a rosy picture that it's perfect. Did you say fine. Project Veritas? Yes, they did an undercover yeah, that's investigation. The guy, uh, that's the guy who got ousted for being like a sex criminal and like scam artist, James O'Keefe. That's his organization, right? Um, he's not part of that organization now. So the yeah. organization that he left, um, Project Veritas, the original organization, did this investigation. They don't have a lot in, of credibility, um, Veritas. It seems like every investigation they do is just chock full holes of... Uh, untruths and just blatant lies. This honestly just sounds like somebody who's believing the bad put in front of them and ignoring like the actual evidence. It's a very credible institution for pulling data from. Well, there's multiple organizations like Project Veritas that do expose Which other ones? this. Um, <clears throat> Um, so gays against groomers and ambassador for them. They are gays also exposing groomers. this. Really? Really? That's like your go to. No. Gays against groomers. So who's have you heard of them? I haven't. But who's the groomer then? Um, so basically, Gays Against Groomers is an organization of hundreds of LGBT people. It includes trans people as well. Basically, these uh, this organization is calling out the harms. Uh, they're doing investigations of gender clinics, calling out the harms of doing this to kids. Because, look, where's we the get grooming the come in, though? That's the part that I find like really inflammatory because grooming implies that <laughs> trans people or trans activists, and it's what you said here in this tweet, that they're pedophiles, that they're sexualizing kids. So where does that evidence come from? Because it's one thing to say we're against uh, gender affirming care for minors, mm -hmm. but it's a whole different thing to say, you know, they're grooming. Well, that word is basically used because we're seeing many um, uh, drag shows, like adult drag shows, where kids are attending, and it's very sexually explicit. So that is a form of grooming. We also see um, these kids' books in public libraries and in schools where they're teaching kids about drag and being trans. You know, that's not a subject a kid should hear. So that is a form of grooming because it's okay. indoctrinating so, kids. So you think learning about being trans and that drag is something that exists as indoctrinating kids, that was so strange. And also this whole like people being against kids seeing drag queens and drag shows is so bizarre to me because it's like, yes, some drag shows are 18 plus and are 18 plus themed. Those ones, kids are not going to. But the drag queen shows and story times and things that are happening for children are appropriate for children. Just because some drag queens or the same drag queens do some 18 plus shows and material doesn't mean all of it is that. I know that there was that one uh, drag show with kids that was kind of a hot button issue. Where, what other examples uh, can you think of of drag shows with kids uh, involved? Where they're being groomed. So there's, um, in the last year, there's a an investigative journalist, Taylor Hansen. He's exposed at least twenty drag shows in Texas that are, oh, really? are called 20. all ages drag shows. Uh, they're called all ages drag shows, and they're basically doing sex acts on stage. They have uh, breasts. You know, they're doing very inappropriate things. So no, it's just. So hold on, sorry, Ali. You're, you're you're making so many claims, and I just want to get to each one. Uh, you mentioned mm -hmm. an organization, Gays Against Groomers, which yeah. was founded by. Jamie Mitchell, is that right? Mm -hmm. So Jamie Mitchell and their partner are ultra MAGA Trump followers, and there's nothing wrong with uh, being a Trump supporter, but they're also anti-transgender. They spread anti-transgender propaganda with QAnon conspiracy theories, and and interestingly, the founders are straight. So how is it that they can make a gays against a groomers organization when they themselves are not even gay? That seems disingenuous. Well, firstly, that's a Wikipedia page. You know, Wikipedia has a lot of bias with the um, woke um, people that so write. Jamie on that. Mitchell Actually, is gay. She's gay. She's a lesbian. All of the people you have to be LGBT to be a member. They support people being trans as an adult. But what they're trying to do is calling out the harm that we're seeing um, caused to children. And that's the real issue here is about protecting kids. I have seen 
something mm-hmm. troubling from a, a trans person that I thought mm-hmm. was kind of gross. They were selling, it was like a kid's t-shirt with a trans person on it, and then they had like kid's toys with trans people on it, and it was kind of gross and groomy. Have you seen anything like that before? You know, I've seen T-shirts that the um, lieutenant governor of Minnesota wore protect trans kids with a knife on it. You know, mm. things like that. I've seen T-shirts that says protect trans rights with AK-47s on it and stuff. And, you know, I don't think that's helpful messaging for. And that's just trans activists, by the way, Ethan. This is a small number of people. And that's who I'm calling out specific trans activists who have highlighted. Um, sorry, I have hijacked the trans movement. So actually, you know what's interesting, Ollie? If you go to your website right now, your merch website, I was actually talking about your merch. You are actually selling kids' lunchboxes with a picture of you depicted as a trans woman. And you're selling... No, that's not as a trans woman. Oh, it's not. not. That's just a K-pop picture of me. I, I had a feeling you would say that because here it is, you wearing that design. And it's pretty obvious to tell that this is depicting you. This is from just like a month ago. And this is when you were trans. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So do you think it's appropriate to sell this to kids? Well, it's a lunchbox with a picture of a K-pop cartoon. There's well, it's you as a trans. It's you as a trans woman. It's me as a K-pop star. It's nothing to do with being trans or not. That's just a cartoon of me as a K-pop star. So. A woman K-pop star. And you identified as a trans woman at the time. And that image was modeled off of you so therefore that image is of a trans woman right right but at the time you were a trans woman correct at the time i was a trans woman but so that, there's nothing inappropriate so it's you as that. a trans woman that i was a trans woman at the time that picture does not depict me as a trans woman it depicts me as a k-pop star but i find that interesting that you're willing to uh make that separation when you're making such general claims about uh groomers and stuff because to me by your own definition this is pretty groomy and even if you go, and this is it's all on, an well, hold on, it's Ollie, an hold on picture. one sec. Even if you go on your website right now, you're selling the same graphic, un, Ollie London, Ollie Merch Squad, as you depicted as a trans woman. And if you look at the available sizes, it's just kids. Three to four. Do you think it's appropriate for a three to four year old to buy this shirt? Yeah, of course. Any K-pop fan, if they want to buy my merch, they're absolutely entitled to. There's nothing inappropriate with that merch at all. It's <laughs> that a is a trans music. woman, Ollie. You're not understanding you're your own logic. You're clutching at straws. How am That's I? A, you a were a tra- okay. Hold on. Let's let's follow this through. You were a trans woman when you made this. There's a picture mm-hmm. of you wearing it. It's obviously yeah, you correct. as a trans woman. Here's you as a trans woman, and here's you as a trans woman on the shirt on a kid's shirt. How am I clutching at straws? This is what can be so frustrating about talking to people when they get caught out in just spouting bullshit. And like one rule for you, another rule for me. You can't just sit there and go clutching at straws. It's a cartoon. Just admit it's a bit of merch with a trans woman on it. And there's nothing wrong with that. The tongue is out like that. It's a little disturbing. I'm Ethan, come on. I'm doing a K-pop pose. That's just, You're just clutching at straws. No, why is the tongue out? I find that a little uh, provocative. Let's at least be consistent. If we're going to accuse people of grooming kids, you know, and, and which you have made a, 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 a short-lived but uh, a somewhat profitable career of doing, then I think we need to, uh, you know, uh, we need to get on top of this. Uh, I just don't think it's appropriate to be selling sure. lunch boxes that, with a trans if, woman if on that it. that lunch box... If, Ethan, if that lunchbox had something inappropriate or sexual, that would be wrong. But this is an innocent cartoon of me doing a K-pop pose. There's nothing wrong with that particular picture. If it was an inappropriate or in a sexual way, that would be completely wrong. And of course, I would never sell that. But that's an innocent drawing of a cartoon, Ethan. Let's say a kid's at a drag queen show. That's grooming. And let's say they are selling lunchboxes to the kids of a dra- with a picture of a drag queen on it, doing a cute pose or whatever, right? Not sexual, but they're in drag. Do you think it's appropriate for a kid to carry that lunchbox? Well, I think it's appropriate if the kid's at a drag show that's inappropriate because some drag shows are generally not inappropriate. But okay, a lot so, of them are becoming Okay, sexualized. that's interesting. So some drag mm-hmm. shows are appropriate and some aren't. Correct. It's about if you're going to do anything in front of kids, it should be a PC. It should not have anything sexual. But sadly, <laughs> a lot of these shows are doing sexual things. So kids should not be there. If, if the merch is there and it's a show that's sexual, they shouldn't be there in the first right. place. Okay, this is interesting. So you're saying it is okay for kids to go to drag shows? I'm not saying that at all. I don't think they should in, in general, you but just, I'm just saying... If, if they're not sexual, and I, I would assume it's not because it's for kids, right? I mean, if they're doing sexual stuff, I would consider that. Obviously, everyone would consider that uh, inappropriate. 
Mm-hmm. But I believe you've just said drag shows are uh, safe for kids. In fact, you would yeah, even yeah, be okay. Yeah. Well, hold on. You would even you even said you'd be okay with them carrying a drag show lunchbox. No, look, I just don't think kids should be anywhere that is putting ideas into their heads. You know, if a show is innocent, you know, that's obviously better than it being a sexual show. But I still don't think kids should be exposed to gender ideology. This is just unraveling. He's just said like four different things. He's gone in at four different angles and had four different opinions about this. You can't just keep changing it. So it's like when it was directly related to his merch, oh, actually, yes, some are okay. And if they're okay shows, then of course, like they're then the merch, sure. But like they're inappropriate. Most of them inappropriate. And then it's just like unraveling to the point where he gets back to saying gender ideology, not like kids just shouldn't be exposed to that at all. But then what about this merch? Does that not fall under that category? That has nothing to do with any kind of ideology. It's okay pop pictures so you're expressing yourself as a woman on the box i'm just it's just a cartoon ethan i don't know why you keep going on about it's a cartoon it's just a cartoon i mean i feel like you're trying to downplay the significance of this ollie cartoons can be inappropriate i'm not saying that one is it's just like the argument back of it's just a cartoon that has no substance to it what do you make of this picture uh, are these kids in are these kids in danger your thoughts well i haven't seen the video of that particular show and it depends what book they're reading. If the drag queen is teaching It appears teaching to about be Dendrite depicting Dendrite. some fish, a couple rainbow of fish, fish in the ocean. It seems like... That's not what it's called? Fish. The rainbow fish. Uh, it seems to be the rainbow fish, Ali. Well, it, it, you know, I think a lot of these books are pushing even subtle messages on gender ideology, trying to tell kids you should tra- be trans and become LGBT. And I am 29 years old. The Rainbow Fish was a book that I had as a very young child. Yes, it turned out to be trans. Oh my God, it was the Rainbow Fish book. No, if you're going to try and like hate on a book and be like, oh, gender ideology, pushing things on kids, don't go for a book that has been around for decades. Kids should make that decision on their own. So if that book is teaching them about, you know, transitioning <laughs> or becoming a drag queen, that's inappropriate. It's and that's the Rainbow the Fish. With- Yes, but I haven't read the book. I can't see what the book is. So based on that one picture, does that book contain subtle messaging that's trying to tell kids to change their gender when they shouldn't be thinking about things like that? And, you know, in Florida, they've obviously banned books um, in the classroom that teach gender ideology. And there's a lot of books, uh, kids' books. There's a book called The Gay ABCs, and that pushes gender ideology. From For two-year-olds, it's two plus. And I don't think that's appropriate for a kid that just should be reading kids' books that are completely innocent. It is a kid's book that's completely innocent. If you see it as not completely innocent, then that's your problem. But it doesn't mean it's true. It's not pushing an ideology. It's not pushing things on kids. It's not forcing them to be anybody. It's just saying, hey, some people are LGBT+, and that's okay. And for kids who are LGBT+, that's going to be great. They're going to grow up knowing that that is something they can be and that it's okay to be that. And if they're not, they're going to grow up knowing that it's okay for other people to be LGBT+, and they'll be more accepting. That there is literally not a problem with this. It shouldn't but even what do you be make of this? Kind of what do you make of this lunchbox, though? <laughs> Why do you keep going back to the lunchbox? Well, well, because, literally... well because, because, you know, <laughs> it's got a picture of a trans woman on a kid's lunchbox. It's got a picture of a K-pop star on the lunchbox. Who's the K-pop star? <laughs> Who, who's the K-pop <laughs> Come on, It's you, right? It's me. You, yeah, it's you. you. As a tra- and you, and this K-pop star is a trans woman, right? I was trans at the time. The, the right. image doesn't necessarily depict any. Did that photo parent. of you? Uh, uh, so is, is, not even even. It's not even a photo of me. It's literally a, it's a cartoon, cartoon had right. an a- anime cartoon drawn of me. Right. Would you buy it for your kids? I mean, Would I wouldn't want. I, I I wouldn't just because I don't want to support you financially. But uh, okay. th- but theoretically, I I don't think I'd have a problem with. No, I wouldn't have a problem with my children. Uh, Looking up to a trans person, of course not. What would be wrong with that? No, and I and and Ethan, look, I don't have a problem with trans people at all. I'm just saying that certain things, when it comes to gender <laughs> ideology, if, if transgenderism is being pushed on young kids in preschool or even elementary school, when they shouldn't be thinking about that, I think it's wrong to expose them to that. I think exposing it's them kids to trans discover people. Who they are. So by that logic, merely exposing kids to anything is pushing it on them. I was exposed to a lot of religion when I was growing up. I went to schools where we sang Christian hymns and things like that. And I went to churches on school trips. And it's not just religion, but like literally anything. Like I was taught algebra. Oh my God, I was exposed to the algebra 
ideology. It's just teaching them about the world and about different ways to be in the world. And if you're going to have one rule for one way of being, then you have to apply that as a blanket. You can't just single out trans people and LGBT plus people and say, okay, the kids cannot be exposed to this thing. Oh, but these other things that I like, these are okay. The logic just falls apart and it just turns into, okay, well, clearly you just have an issue with LGBT plus people. Kids being taught it does not make them trans or gay. Really uh, important point that you're not, you know, coming to terms with. We're exposing kids to a, a trans woman. Don't you think that's <laughs> wrong? Why is it still on your website at least, you know? You know, it's, it's come on, Ethan. It's just, I don't know what to say. It's a cartoon of a K-pop right, star right. and it's very innocent. It's just like a little anime drawing. It's nothing, you know, if I was doing something inappropriate, if I had, you know, protect trans kids on there, that would have a message. That would have a loaded gender ideology message. But do you hear what you're saying though? A loaded gender ideology message, something that is viewed as negative by Ollie, is literally a message that says to protect people, protect trans kids, protect the care that's scientifically evidenced and clinically evidenced as being best for them and being the correct path, protect them in allowing them to be themselves and express how they are most comfortable. Ollie views that as negative and an ideology and something bad that kids should never be exposed to. It literally says Ollie Squad with a cartoon of me doing the peace sign. It's like super cute, super innocent. I mean, aren't you making like the he the ahigo face a little bit? You don't know about the ahigo face? No. I don't believe you. Come on. No, I watch anime like I watch Attack of the Titans. That's and stuff, straight cat, my really brother. <laughs> this is it. And you can see the resemblance, right? Here's the ahigo face. Go on. It's from it's like a hentai reference. But okay. You, but you see the resemblance, right? <laughs> Can you put them side by side? Sure, yeah, I'd be happy to. I mean, that's quite a cute drawing. Right, but that's like a woman, like, is what that is. Well, or like well, that's lustful. Not what it's like a lustful <laughs> kind of uh, sexual gratification. Adrian, you're phase. really clutching at straws. Am I'm I? Literally, like, I've got my eyes open, I'm doing the peace sign, and what you're is... trying to dissect it and say. I have no idea what that is. That was an interesting point, though, because if that had been picked up by somebody transphobic, Oh my god, would that be absolutely ripped apart everywhere and the person who had that merch would just be called all sorts of names, even though the likelihood is, is probably done completely accidentally. It's the hypocrisy again, it's like, oh it's okay for me to do it, but it's not okay for other people. I would see your point completely if, for instance, it had a messaging on there, like some political because I don't think kids should be exposed oh, to politics needs, either. Wow. Um, no political or gender ideology message. If that was on there, that'd be different. If it was a sexually suggestive image, but this is literally an innocent cartoon. I've got my eyes open. I'm doing the peace sign. You could not get innocent. What do I need to do, Ethan, like to please people? Do I have to like close my eyes? Well, I personally don't necessarily have a prop. What What is your fascination with the eye wideness? I haven't said anything about that. No, I'm just saying that, look, in the picture, my eyes, it's got very, it's not even me, by the way, it's a cartoon, but the eyes are very wide open, right. like Up glistening. You. I swear earlier he admitted it was him. That's just a K-pop picture of me. That's just a cartoon of me as a K-pop star. So. This is depicting you. This is yes, from correct. just like a month ago. Okay, but let's move no, on. I, you know, I do know, I do know anime and stuff. I don't know anything to do with that pose. Literally, I've got my mouth open like this. Peace. I always have my mouth open, you know, like. Mm-hmm. Sure. Come on. So the trans, but you identify as a male now. You're not trans. We're over that. No, I'm like, well, basically, I got to a point where I was going to probably die from <laughs> the surgery I was doing. And, you know, I was really mentally struggling. Um, I had a lot of mental health struggles based on variety of issues which I talk about in my book um from when I was being bullied very severely as a kid um I was always told I was like ugly or I looked like a monster or you know I was more feminine or I had man boobs um so you know, I just used to have all those things that left me with traumas so it kind of messed up my head and okay. as an adult I didn't deal with that in the way that I should have I should have had therapy I should have spoke to someone I instead it was almost like self-harming so all this crazy surgery was me kind of um kind of lashing out at the bullies and it was very very destructive for me and for other people so, so you know you I'm, I'm glad that, to be over that do you think that people who are bullied are at a higher chance of becoming trans that sounds like a horrible experience and nobody should go through that level of bullying but like then to turn that around and be like oh because i went through this and that's how i dealt with it personally this is why i think other people do it this is i think it is a connection yeah just because i experienced it like it's all very anecdotal it's all very picking and choosing the information that you actually pay attention to and the very specific tiny little things that don't even add up and don't even have any evidence behind them that's what 
what people choose to latch on to and be like, this means trans is bad. Well, actually, when you pay attention to the real evidence and the trans people talking, it's not. But no, we forget, they're all biased. Let's not listen to the actual group of people involved in what we're talking about. There's a lot of studies. There was a study in Finland by the top transgender um, clinic that um, was basically transitioning a lot of kids. And they said around, I think it was around 45% of the kids had experienced severe bullying. So that led to their gender dysphoria um, identity. But so, there's so also your, the other your, side Your where, theory is that no. the bullying leads to the dysphoria, not the dysphoria leading to the bullying, which would no, be was, more logical. Was, no, no, I was just about to say as well, but there is also the flip side of that where kids that are, but the kids are being bullied because of their identity, you know, because maybe a boy is more feminine or a girl is more like a tomboy. So they're also being bullied for that. But in, in certain um, studies, the one in Finland at Tampere University, they found that there was a significant correlation between a kid being bullied and then the onset of their gender dysphoria. Correlation can't tell you that. Correlations aren't causational. He's just gone, there was a significant correlation and then he made a causational statement. And that's not how that works. I have that theory you're citing in front of me. Uh, ta Tampere University, Finland, yeah. Here it is. Let's read the conclusion. It's a, here, there's the abstract and everything. Let's see. The conclusion says gender identity, especially non binary identity, is associated with both being bullied and perpetrating bullying, even uh, when a range of variables, including internal stress and involvement in bullying and the opposite role, are taken into account. This suggests that bullying during adolescence may serve as a mechanism of maintaining heteronormality, which I think what that means is that the bullying uh, actually results in people rejecting their transness uh, in favor of hetero heteronormality. So, so it seems to be saying the opposite, actually, of what you've claimed it said. Do you see what I'm referring to? Heteronormality? Yeah, no, I see that. I yeah. see that okay. article. That you know, if you actually read the full study, which that's I've read the, the conclusion, full study, you can find it on the National Institute of Health. Oh um, no, this is the study. Yeah, no, this is this is the uh, this is the study. It's the dot yeah, gov Finland. Yeah, yeah, this is it. Uh, and then this is the author's conclusion right there. I mean, that's pretty much that. This is the one you're talking about. This says the opposite of what Ollie was claiming, and he was like, "There's a correlation, which means being bullied leads to being trans." And it's like that's literally not even anywhere close to what this study is saying and what they found. And what does he expect if you go down to read the full results and conclusion? It's not suddenly going to tell a different story and say the opposite to what's in the abstract. The abstract is a summary of a reflection of what is then expanded upon in the rest of the paper. It's not a separate paper and separate results. The study is also saying it's associated with being bullied and being um uh, the perpetrator so it's basically saying yes that but the right but the the message this is the last sentence so let's not let's read this together carefully mm -hmm. it suggests that bullying during adolescence may serve as a mechanism of maintaining hetero normality do we understand what that says no, i get what it's saying it's basically right. saying that some of these kids that are being bullied um will maintain their original identity because of the bullying correct but the study also if you read the full study the study also speaks there's a high correlation between there's two different findings in the study there's a study there's a finding that around 45 percent of the kids are bullied and that causes the gender dysphoria and there's also a part of the study which also says like the conclusion is finding that some of these kids are bullied because of their gender dysphoria and it makes it worse. Oh, so there's, it, it there's seems two different like findings. If, if two outcomes are possible, then it doesn't seem that interesting. I wonder why you bring it up. Well, no, uh, re read the full study. It also talks about this the... Is it. Right, so I just took a minute to read the full discussion of this and also search the paper for the 45% number that Ollie was mentioning. And literally there's nothing more to it than just an expanded version of what's in the abstract. The two findings are being bullied and the findings around that but nothing that says that bullied kids are more likely to be trans and they are trans because they were bullied that is literally not what is said at all and then the second part of it is the being the bully those are the two parts of the study not anything that ollie is saying i can't find anything like that in there i don't know where that's come from this is the author they wrote the conclusion right here this is their that's 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 a small summary oh, on you that's the you author read... that's the author that's their conclusion. Correct. Right. But if you read in the Who National Institute of Health... better to draw a conclusion than the author of the study? No, no, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying if you... I've read the full study multiple you times. Multiple the National times. Institute of Health. 
Mm-hmm. But also, if you're writing a paper, I'm not being like, oh, I've written papers. I've done a PhD. I've written a thesis. I've been first author on papers. I have written. I have contributed towards papers. In the abstract, you would not leave out an entire set of results and conclusions. I've never heard of that happening. If a paper had literally found that being bullied causes being trans, which it doesn't, so no paper's ever gonna find that. But if that had been found, that's gonna be front and center there. That is gonna be one of the main things talked about and it is not mentioned. According to this, bullying prevents more kids from transitioning. Do you believe that we need more bullying? No, I, I'm an advocate against bullying. I think whoever gets bullied, it, it's so, so wrong. I've been bullied myself and I'm an advocate. But if for bullying results in less transitioning, then that, sh- then that, according to what you're saying, is the best outcome for these kids. No, I don't, I don't agree at all. No kid, even if a kid is feminine or a girl is a tomboy, they should not get bullied. No one should get bullied. They should be provided with support. But if somebody wants to transition, I'm not against people transitioning. I just don't think it's right as a kid because a lot of these kids are going through so many issues during that time. They are not in the right frame of mind to make an informed consent. The whole argument as well, not that trans kids are even getting access to this, but it's like, why are we trusting cis kids know their gender and allowing them to go through permanent things, but we're not trusting trans kids. And we're distrusting them to the point where we force them to go through permanent bodily changes that they are stating very strongly that are not who they are. And this is not me saying that all kids should be put on puberty blockers or anything, but it's just calling out the flaw in the logic and people trying to say, oh, well, kids are too young to know who they are. They got a lot going on. I don't, I don't know. Surely that count like puberty permanently changes people's bodies a lot in ways that are very, very difficult to reverse. And there are many things that are irreversible. So we trust cis kids to go through that process. And then we distrust trans kids so much that they are pushed through the process that they know is wrong for them. So there's a lot of um, clinics and doctors that use this argument. There's a clinic called Kaiser Permanent, Permanent in California. Kaiser, Ka- um, Kaiser Permanente. Yes, that's it. Thank you. Um, yeah, so basically they have used with multiple people that have since detransitioned, Chloe Cole and Layla. But what they said afterwards is they actually felt worse six months down the line after their transition because they've got hormones in their body. They've got puberty blockers. Um, and, and they you even had double mastectomy. that the vast majority of people that transition don't regret it. I think it's like 95 percent, 99 percent. Are you aware of that stuff? You don't you don't hear the cases of the detransitioner. You don't hear the cases of the detransitioner, says the detransitioner on a podcast who said multiple media appearances has written a book. Proportionately, we do hear a lot from detransitioners, but the ones who have a negative opinion, what we need more is discussions and awareness that yes, 1% of people detransition, although the most likely reason for regret and detransition is social stigma. And many people go on to later retransition, but not getting into that right now. It's just fact. But talking about those detransitioners, they deserve support. Absolutely. They don't deserve to be shunned at all. The trans community does not dislike them. But we don't hear those stories. We hear from people like Ollie London. And so it makes it seem like detransitioners are being silenced and there's this tiny little minority of, that speak out. And all the ones that speak out are completely anti-gender affirming care because it was wrong for them. And so therefore it must be wrong for everybody else. It's just... Oh. 99% of kids that transition do not regret it. No, I don't support that statistic. I think it's wrong okay. because these from, clinics... From what, from what authority do you dis, disprove that statistic? Well, the, look, these clinics make these studies. They don't even do follow-up studies. There's an example of a Do you not trust studies? Average... Because you just told me to read one. Look, what I'm saying is the gender clinics make billions of dollars every year. Their studies are skewered and biased. In a they review of 27 follow-up. studies involving almost 8,000 teens and adults who had trans, transgender surgeries... Mostly in Europe, U.S. and Canada, 1% on average expressed regret. For some regret was temporary, but a small number went on to detransition. But that's 1%. Uh, That seems like a very small amount to be uh, singularly focused on. And this is 27 studies, so this is a massive kind of (coughs) conclusion, right? Uh, A scientific conclusion, a, a consensus, if you would. Yes, but what I'm saying is there's a clinic, for instance, Tavistock Clinic, which was the main clinic in the U.K., they were actually exposed. They were doing studies as well. They weren't bothering we were to check the with the detransitioners. They didn't bother to check with the detransitioners. They didn't check how the hormones oh, were affecting over Oh, I know what you're talking year. about. That English one for, for... Yeah. Yeah, so that that one, if I recall, I looked into that. People say it was shut down. It was actually... Wasn't it... Um, it's being they, shut down. Right, but... Still open. They're, mm-hmm. making, they're actually making a bigger one so they can serve more needs. 
I, I actually, so it's not really being shut down, actually. Um, Tra- that say the is, name again. It, Tra- it, what is it? Um, it's called Tavistock. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that one's actually being shut down this year because basically <laughs> the National Health Service, which is basically looks after all the hospitals in the UK for the government, um, they actually said that there were a lot of um, ethical violations and stuff, and they also changed their policy based on what happened at that clinic via internal investigations. They found that many of these kids were being pushed to transition without having checks on their mental health and they're basically being pushed into it and fast track very you quickly think it's, it's such a deflection it's like hey here's a statistic i'm facing you with oh i refute that statistic yes but you just brought up another paper i guess but i refute this statistic i don't want to listen to the statistic that goes against what i think okay so just having a quick read about the tavistock clinic which i've heard stuff about i also heard that every time it's like there's a whistleblower and there's something called out it's just refuted and so essentially it was found to not be able to meet the needs of patients because it was underfunded it was too small it could not take care of patients properly as in like see them in a timely manner so it's being closed which has now been delayed it is being closed at some point i think next year or the year after and split into two more regional hubs to better care for people going it's not them saying our gender affirming care for kids is wrong so we're closing down the clinic it's them going we need to do better by these kids so we need to create a better system in order to treat them in the way that is appropriate which is gender affirming so it's like deflecting these statistics that are thrown and being like hey people don't like the Tavistock clinic and then it's like Tavistock clinic's been called out because it doesn't function properly there needs to be more funding to it to actually help kids in the way they need help which is gender affirming of the actual people who that transition only one percent regret it do you uh, you're not acknowledging that i don't i i don't trust uh, studies why? even if you're 27, it's 27, 27 studies. studies then why did you tell me to read this one ollie you use <laughs> studies when it's convenient for you but you don't when it when it goes against your thesis. I don't understand your consistency with studies. Do we like them or no? <laughs> what I'm trying to say, Ethan, is the gender clinics are very, very powerful. Do we, they no, no, no. control? Ollie, do we studies. like studies or not? All studies or no I studies? I like studies. Oh, we do. You no, know, I like studies. You, you do like you studies. Have to... That is literally like, I trust it if it comes from a specific source whose views exactly align with mine, but otherwise I don't trust it. Like, that's literally 27 studies. You're telling me you think every single one is so heavily biased the results came out at 1% regret. They could be wildly off 1% and it would still be a very low percentage. Like, I don't know what more people want. This is like speaking to a brick wall. Nothing is going in. There's just a lot coming out, though. You know, the clinic in Finland was a transgender clinic that made the study. So they had different findings to the many of the clinics in America that are saying there's a low detransition rate. But there are thousands of detransitioners out there. They're just not sharing their stories because of fear of being attacked. And, uh, you know, they get abuse every single day from trans activists. So there's thousands of kids out there that are, there's 50,000 detransitioners on a Reddit, a subreddit forum uh, speaking about detransitioning, but they're scared to come out and talk about it because they're going to get attacked. So there's so, a lot of people hiding. You seem to be in denial, Ali, that the vast, vast majority of these people, let's say there is a bias. Let's say instead of 1%, <coughs> it's 10% regret it. And that's a huge deviation. So I'm giving you a lot of doubt here. If 10% only uh, regret it, do you think that on whole, of the 90% who don't regret it and who had what they consider life-changing uh, care, health care, why would you seek to deny them life-changing health care? When they, well, Ethan, they, the, yeah, they say, this saved my life. Well, Ethan, a children can't get tattoos, children can't buy cigarettes or buy alcohol. So how on earth can they consent to doing something they don't <laughs> even understand about? We have to look at many of these kids. They don't understand. They don't think about the future. Like if a kid changes their body, they have gender reassignment surgery or take hormones. They might not be able to have a baby when they're older. They don't think about those things because they're kids. So the issue is just we shouldn't be doing this to kids. It should happen, you know. As an adult, they can make informed consent, but... This is going into, like, very dangerous territory. And this was questioned when somebody tried to sue gender clinics in the UK and say, like, no under-18 can consent to this, but then it kind of changes the parameters for any under-18 with any kind of medical decision about themselves. And it's just a very complicated thing to get into. And it is very biased towards saying, like, oh, well, trans... It's, it's the same thing of, like, we can't trust trans people to know who they really are and make the right decision 
decisions for themselves, but we can trust cis kids. And under 18s are able to have certain types of plastic surgery. Nobody's calling for that to stop, neither am I, I'm just using it as a point here. Under 18s can do a lot of things that permanently alter their life path and that's perfectly legal for them to do and is perfect and they're perfectly able to do. And nobody's going after that. I'm pretty sure the reports of some people in some places of America who are wanting children to be able to marry, but like marry adults. That's not right. <laughs> He's not saying anything about that. No, it's just trans kids who aren't even doing anything permanent when they're children. We're talking about like mid to late teens and things start happening. Even with some of the parents agreeing hey, Ollie, to it. Do you, know, the... do you know how many kids between the age of six and 17 went through irreversible surgery in the United States? Um, I know the number rises every year. Now it will be okay. several thousand. So the number of patients, of children between 6 and 17 who went through irreversible surgery in the United States, uh, what was the year? Uh, the years on that one? Uh, three years, 2019 through two th uh, 2021. So this is the most comprehensive data we have, and this comes straight from the, uh, the government stats. It was 250 per year. Does that seem significant to you? Uh, that's completely incorrect because there Based are there's what? a clinic in Oregon. It's it's in the thousands now. There's a clinic in Oregon that's done at least the thousands. Is that significant? A thousand? I mean, we have fifty that, million children in the United States. Do you think a thousand well, yeah. is, is statistically significant? There's thousands, and, and uh, this study probably only takes into account people on Medicaid or Medicare. There are also the parents of patients that pay out of pocket. So Even if I it's think thousands, the study would, Ollie, let's say it's thousands. Would, would, is this significantly uh, significant when we have 51 million children in the United States between ages 6 and 17? It's significant even because it's growing every day. If you look at any chart or graph of um, kids being medically transitioned, it's now in the tens of thousands across the U.S. Uh, California has uh, thousands alone. Um, Florida. Uh it's again this phrasing of like being medically transitioned. Your stats and your factual information has just gone completely over my head and I'm choosing to ignore it because I want to go based on this information that other people have told me that is anecdotal, that I'm predicting, that I've seen a PowerPoint graph for. Like at least Ethan is saying where he's getting all of this information from. Ollie is giving very little background and almost no resources at all except some names of organizations that Ethan then calling out, and then one study that wasn't even correct in terms of how Ollie had interpreted it. He's giving no resources and no sources for what he's actually saying. He's just saying, I've heard this, I've heard that, I've seen this happening, I've seen a graph. It's like, well, bring it then. Have a laptop, have a phone, be like, well, this is where it's from. There is nothing, and like, I just find this time and time again when reacting to people who have transphobic views, who are going after any kind of tra trans kids, trans adults, both, like trans women, trans men, non-binary people, like any kind of trans argument, whenever they start bringing in statistics and ignoring the actual facts and the actual evidence, there are no sources to back up what they are saying about what they believe. And then they are just choosing to ignore the actual sources of evidence. It doesn't create a strong argument at all from transphobes. There isn't a strong argument to be transphobic. There's, there's a clinic, uh, Dr. Gallagher, who performs <laughs> at least uh, five, surgery, uh, five surgeries on minors every month um so you know that's just one clinic you so those, it's in the uh, numbers uh, is it possible to get a reference um dr gallagher is a clinic in um florida and she operates on minors okay i looked at that and like there seems to be a lot being said about her there was a bit in there she performs gender affirming surgeries and one of them a month is on an under 18 one and ollie's like at least five at least, but you're, you're inflating it by five times, which is throughout the year. Like, I'm not going to trust your stats when I'm reading something, that's, and then you're sat, sat there. No. And so what is wrong with the number going up? I mean, let's say it goes up from 1,000 to 2,000 in the whole United States. I mean, so, so obviously, so, one would mm -hmm. assume, right, Ollie, as people become more educated and aware of transgenderism, and we've seen the same thing with uh, homosexuality, which, of course, you are you are a member of the LGBT community, you know, um, in the 50s, as being uh, gay became more acceptable, you saw the numbers significantly rising during that time. I'm sure you know that, right? Yeah, of course, because so what's it the became difference? more acceptable. What is the difference between the hysteria that took place then about there was, you know, uh, on the right that they're turning our kids gay? That turned out not to be true. You agree? 
Yeah, absolutely. Okay, good, absolutely good, good. Correct. So hold on to that. So now today we see the same graph going up of trans kids getting surgery or gender affirming care or whatever. So why is it that you today can draw a conclusion that was the same conclusion in the 50s that you disagree with that trans kids are being influenced societal to become trans? It seems to be a glaring contradiction in logic. It, you know, it's not just random based on the fact that it, people, it's easier for people to come out these days or identify in different ways. It is a concerted push, Ethan. So there's now what over said 60... About gay people? The, uh, Ethan, there's now over 60 pediatric gender clinics that have opened <clears throat> within the last 15 years across the US. They weren't there before, so they are profiting. Ollie's brought up this trope as well about, like, big pharma and, like, clinics profiting off of trans people, and that's the only reason they do it. It's like, well, say that in the UK, where the NHS is, like, stretched so much everywhere, and gender clinics as well can't cope with the amount of referrals coming through, because just like, as the left-handed graph, right, as things get more accepted and less stigmatized, more spoken about, and people realize that's who they are, there is a natural increase, and there's not an increase in the people who actually are that, but just an increase in the people who realize that's who they are, and know that's who they can live as. Like, and 60 to open up across the United States. Why is that not seen as meeting in this unnecessary demand to provide the correct and appropriate and medically advised care for a group of people within society? Why is it seen as some big conspiracy and like a money-making scheme? 60 across the entire United States of America does not seem like such a massive amount. They're opening clinics because they know they can profit. <laughs> so when they push, you know, through popular culture or, or push transitioning via TikTok trends, uh, they are profiting from that. So it benefits them if society and children are being confused and indoctrinated in schools or via social media because they, they can get thought, more patients through so, their but, door. So that's good. But let's focus on this this issue. It's social media is for more. <laughs> they said that gay kids were being influenced to be gay. You disagree with that now. And you're one of the people that says kids are being influenced to become trans. And it's the same curve. Why is that curve not just the result of it becoming more acceptable uh, in society? Because it's the same um, curve, the, right? The, same curve. Uh, it, it's a huge curve, you know, and it's really in the last five years since um, TikTok came about, we're seeing so many, there's, there's about well, 2.2 well, billion well, who, people. What does it matter how they become aware of it? I'm telling you, it's the same curve. What I'm trying to tell you is that there are influences now that didn't exist 10 years like ago what? that are pushing kids. For instance, TikTok, there's so TikTok, about 2.2. So TikTok is turning people trans, where back in the 50s, people said it was like rock and roll music. It was movies. It was yeah. hippie movements. Uh, that wasn't accessible to the generation before them. I don't see the difference. What I'm saying is that kids are being exposed to influences that it didn't have before. Same you know, in the 50s. Kids are being on He's just saying the same thing over and over again. Ethan has so much patience with this. And also, like, very good points back and a lot of information. But, like, I don't know if I would have that level of patience with just very legitimately calling out something or asking a very reasonable question and just not getting anything back and just getting the same thing said over and over again. It's like, that doesn't make sense. Your point has been called out you need to move on to a new one and like rebut what has just been said to you or agree with it and move on the same in the 50s the kids who were coming out as gay were also exposed to things that weren't accessible to generations before them well i don't, don't agree with that they didn't have phones no. back then kids are now being pushed trends and the ai algorithm recognizes a kid's vulnerabilities well, make music push videos. music uh you know popular music uh yeah music pop music always, is well pop mm -hmm. music was something that was rock and roll was something that was new back then uh, mm -hmm. no no correct and and you could also argue that um in the 80s more people came out because uh, you know, music like George Michael was, um, you know, and, and songs about freedom so and stuff. So then why are you out concluding with... that TikTok is making people trans? I don't understand the logic. You just contradicted yourself. No, no. What I'm saying is in the last five years, there is an increase in gender clinics opening because they are exploiting um, these children that are being pushed trends. You know, there's a lot of lobby groups, Ethan. The Human Rights Campaign is a massive lobby group. They're going around. Ollie, you were push, trans before um, TikTok. Um, I've struggled with gender dysphoria for all of my before life. Before TikTok. Correct. I was trans before TikTok. Yes, but my um, identity struggles came about because I was using social media too much. And, you but know, Ollie, you were see... born in 1990. You're not that much younger than me. When I grew up, there was no social media. I don't believe you probably had social media until you were in your 20s, well into your 20s. 
Yeah, correct. And the reason I struggled with my identity was because of a bullying in childhood. But then I only transitioned as an but adult. But bullying in childhood, we, was... we established from the report that you told me to read that bullying in childhood results in less people transitioning. <laughs> Sorry, say it again. This, the study you sent me yeah, about the bullying, study. the conclusion was that bullying results in less people transitioning. So you says it's a result of social media. Well, you didn't have social media. Then I'm, you says it was a result of bullying. Person. But this study you told me to read says bullying r reduces the uh, amount of people who, who transition. So how is it that you were trans before, w outside of all of these uh, influences that are turning people uh, trans? How was it that anybody was trans outside of these influences? Why am I trans? I didn't have these influences. I'm an individual, so I'm one person. So my experience is not reflective of every single person that becomes trans out there. But the, the thing is, I became trans as an adult because I really struggled with my identity throughout my whole life. And yes, I did get bullying. Every case is different as well. Some people are bullied because of their gender identity. Some people are not. Um, so every single case is different, but the reason I became trans was, you know, you, you know, you follow my journey, the Korean stuff. That was me trying to find myself and trying to, you know, fit in because I hated the way I looked. If, you're, then, if your journey is a personal one, which I totally understand, then what gives you the right to project your personal experience onto others? Oh, I speak to detransitioners every day. I speak to parents. I speak to women. So and don't they you, are that, very that assumes a bias, Ollie. Yeah, if you're speaking to one, like, the minority, and that's all you're speaking, and that's the only people you're speaking to, you're going to feel like that is overinflated. Like, of course you are. You're talking all day to detransitioners. We've also established, because we, I think, like studies, or I don't know if we decided, I think you said you like studies, because <laughs> 27 of them, made a consensus that 99% of people that transition don't regret it. So if you spend all day talking to the 1% that do regret it, don't you believe that underlies a bias? Well, no, I don't believe it because I talk, really? I talk to all sorts of people. I talk to parents that have trans kids and, you know, they're trying to navigate through that. And the general consensus with everyone I speak to, because... No, I don't. I'm not right wing or left wing. I'm just but saying like you're biased because you're only speaking to detransitioners. Like, no, I'm not biased. Like, I speak to all sorts of people. I speak to the parents of trans kids. Lisa Lippman, who coined the term rapid onset gender dysphoria, which is hugely damaging and not true at all, only spoke to the parents and drew her conclusions based on speaking to parents who she found mostly on transphobic websites. It's like clearly there is a bias in terms of who he's speaking to. They're very much in the center. I'm just trying to help people using my platform to try and help people. You know, the general consensus <laughs> is we shouldn't be doing this to kids. And there generally is a concerted push over the last five years to medically transition children. If kids want to experiment, if a girl wants to be a tomboy, you know, nobody has a problem with that. You know, if they want to become trans as an adult, that's on them. There's so much language around if they want to become, become... I didn't become trans as a 17-year-old. I was always that way. I, I, nothing about me has changed from when I was a child to when I came out as trans. It's just I figured out later than I would have wanted to. But also, he's completely skirting over the fact the amount of support for gender affirming care for trans kids and adults alike gender affirming care is the approved care for trans people like i don't know why this is argued so much things like gender affirming counseling socially transitioning and living as yourself puberty blockers and then when appropriate hormones and surgery that is what has a body of research and studies multiple many of them that say increases well-being, reduces things like depression and anxiety, reduces feelings of gender dysphoria, and generally just makes people happier and have increased well-being. And I don't see why people have such a problem with that. Like, what well, is because they're ignoring those facts. And this counts for trans kids as well. Trans kids who are allowed to socially transition and so access gender affirming care, they are better adjusted, they have better well-being than those who cannot do that. Issue that I talk about every day, I talk with parents, I talk with all these detransition, is when this happens to kids. That's the issue I'm speaking about. Right, it's but that's it's so not about rare. people being trans. Let me ask you another question just to pivot a little bit. I'm one of the people that would say, Ollie London is willing to do anything for attention. You have probably some kind of, I don't want to diagnose you, I'm not a psychiatrist, but there is some craving for attention, clearly, right? Good or bad. 
you said your pronouns were core Ian, you know, you said you were going to get a, your penis re, uh, size reduced so that you could look more, uh, you could be a more th authentic Korean. I mean, these are not serious things. You seem to be a provocateur. Is it possible that you are participating in this right wing grift because one, it's making you a lot of money and two, it's getting you a lot of attention. Is that possible that you actually don't care and that your, your beliefs are empty? Is that possible? No, absolutely not. So when I struggled with my identity for years, I generally was struggling and I was lashing out at bullies. And the more the more I would get bullied online by YouTubers and people on TikTok, the more I would act crazy because I was trying to feel validated and loved. And you know, it was very well, the unhealthy. Con the conservative movement that. has offered you quite a uh, quite an open hand. Uh, they're very glad to be using you as a mouthpiece against trans people. So it must feel good to be being accepted from somebody, even if it is uh, at the detriment of many people who are at risk, trans people. It must feel nice. This is not to sound like a dick or harsh, but before you go on a public platform and talk about things that can be highly damaging to others and spread views, like, make sure they're correct. And if you're called out, pay attention to those call outs. Like, literally being presented with statistical evidence that what you're saying is wrong, and then just completely ignoring it, and still spreading things that are really harmful and really damaging, and attributing your reason for this to be your own journey that you have concluded has gone a certain way because of certain things. If that were me, I don't know if you agree with me, I'd want to be focusing on, like, myself and where I'm at and getting things things clear for me and working through my own past and my experiences and things before just making all of these conclusions and like throwing it onto other people and using it as my reason for throwing it onto other people like it's just spreading this misinformation from Oli like it causes a lot of harm I don't know how many other people have reacted to this video I know it got quite big to probably others so I hope you're not bored with it but I think as many people as possible who can like call this out and like say yeah Ethan is making all the right points here yeah, the better because really this is harmful what Ollie's doing no it's nothing to do with that at all you know I, I could have easily continued doing k-pop I could have focused on tiktok which you know I used to really enjoy doing tiktok I'm not the best singer I like to make fun entertaining videos you know I could have stuck with that in actual fact when I detransitioned <laughs> I lost so many brand deals I lost no, I lost all my invites to New York Fashion Week. I was front row every yeah, but now you're I on Tucker Carlson invites. I mean that's the biggest show in the world or it was rest in peace to the goat yeah, he was the original guy. But no, it's, it's uh, nothing let me, to so do with let, that. No. So you say it's not possible that you are just doing this for attention. If we go back, here's a recording of you saying that you're using the BLM movement for attention and for cameos. Here, listen. Millions. So it's basically every time I do a music video, it's like, if it's a million, it's a thousand pounds. So you know, if I just keep releasing music videos, that's like enough and then also because i've been a lot on twitter there's been so many people talking about me on twitter because i'm supporting the black lives matter and protests and stuff so i had 200,000 views on the video so because of that as well i'm getting a lot of requests so it's just you know i'm just staying relevant uh in the news on tv and stuff because you know the more exposure i have you know if i'm trending on twitter or whatever I'm on tv then the more cameos i get so yeah I'm just so here you say you're supporting blm to stay relevant and because it gets you more cameos have you been getting well, more firstly, cameos uh, since you went uh right wing well firstly that audio was from a number of years ago it was edited deceptively by somebody that was completely uncredible um and just well, basically desperate for attention it's your voice correct it's my voice, but it was edited deceptively to try to make it? me was, look was, bad. So what's the deception? So I'm not doing any of this. What I'm doing now is to try and help people. <laughs> you know, previously, Ethan, I'll admit what's it. Previously, I had some very unhealthy me it's behavior. deceptive. I'm open to hearing you out. How is it deceptive? I'm, I'm explaining. So, you know, okay. previously I had unhealthy behavior where I was generally like thinking, oh, how many likes can I get? How many views can I get? Because I was in a really crazy mental health place. And, you know, I, the more surgery I would get, I would feel worse about myself. So I would try and be validated via online views and things. But in fact, you know, Unlike talking now. to BLM, actually, no, no, I'm not doing it now. If I right. wanted to, even if I wanted to, show. no, if Which I wanted to do, get attention and stuff, yeah. I would stick to doing TikToks. I would stick to doing my K-pop music well, You're videos. getting a lot more attention right now. I mean, you're getting a lot of attention right now. In fact, you wrote a whole damn book about it, Gender Madness. Well, what I'm doing now is because I've actually come to a realization that I have had some very unhealthy behaviors in the past and I'm trying to remedy that. 
you know, because I can't sleep at night when I think, you know, have I done something bad? Have I been a bad influence? So I'm actually trying to remedy that and devote my well, time. I hate to tell to you, if that's what you're concerned about, you're going to be feel really bad when your next phase comes around and you realize this is being a terrible influence, like spreading misinformation, ignoring facts that people are sharing with you and just deciding to carry on talking about something purely based on your personal biased perspective and speaking to a select group of people. I'm sorry, I'm personally not like really biased it. I don't know what to say. Like, I just, that doesn't correlate to me. If, and it's not a phase and I'm not a mouthpiece for anyone. I'm literally just trying to speak up about issues that I have finally woken up to see what's going on in the it world. It seems to me, thinking... Ollie, that if we look at all of your different iterations of your personality, the one consistent thing is a need for attention. This came about when you found God, right? You, uh, and you can fill in the blanks here. You were confused, you were a transgender woman, you were selling uh, kids lunch boxes, depicting a trans woman on it. That's pretty low by your own definition. And then you were walking around and you found God. You entered a church and then you realized, hey, this is a cool vibe, maybe. Well, no, actually before that, I was started to go to therapy, so basically, I lost a lot of my friends. People thought I was really like crazy. And I was, I was very mentally unwell with all of these different crazy identities that I struggled with. So I actually started therapy first um, and I started going to sessions twice a week. And then they actually told me, you know, you need to speak about this. You need to find a community that's uh, accepting, non-judgmental and kind. So hold so on. I, your, your, I, your therapist told you that you're not trans? No, my therapist didn't tell me I wasn't trans, but they said if I'm having issues and struggling with who I am, perhaps I should uh, find a community that's very okay. welcoming and might make me feel like I can belong, okay. you know, take some time off social media. Okay. Um, so they didn't tell me not to be trans. It's nothing, nothing to do with that. So they you, literally told me to try and find myself. So you took a break off social media and then you took your, well, no, you I, took the fountain, your time to find God <laughs> and uh, find your new self? I stopped, you know, I stopped um, spending hours and hours a day on TikTok um, and talk. YouTube, which was, you know, messing up my mind. And I actually left my <laughs> phone at home. I would go to therapy <laughs> sessions and then I started Excuse going me, to sorry. church. And made, it made me realize, you know, there's more to life than just being online or, or, or whatever. You know, I need to actually make a difference in this world. And I've spoken to so many people that are concerned at the direction the world's going in. And, you know, if I can try and help um, parents and help, you know, women and stuff and speak up for people, then, you know, I can um, feel good. Hmm. Sounds like somebody potentially fell in to a transphobic echo chamber. I want to show you this clip from an interview from Piers Morgan, okay? Lots of pictures here of, of, of you as a, as a yes. woman. So how, how long Very ago different. was that? Was that quite recently? That was actually at London Fashion Week, so that was literally a month ago, so kind of a drastic change. So you went from a month, you went from trans woman at Fashion Week, a month later, to being on Pierce Morgan denouncing the trans movement. Uh, when you said, get off, uh, take your time and talk and figure out who you are, you, that all happened within a month. No, actually, since I uh, originally transitioned, I felt great for a couple of months. And then I really started to question it. I started to think, okay, I can even do more surgery to make myself physically become a transgender woman, or I can take a step back. So I was having a lot of thoughts of regret, but it was too late at that point. I'd already done facial feminization. I'd already changed myself. I was very confused. So I'd been having those thoughts for a number of months. And then within a month from the, um, that I particular see. picture being taken, I, I actually did transition. So mm -hmm. tell me about finding God. Tell me about when you were in the church and you had like an awakening. Well, I'd, I'd lost a lot of friends. I lost a lot of loved ones because uh, they thought my behavior was very unhealthy. And, um, you know, it was a, a now or never moment. I could have continued down a very destructive path, destructive for myself and people around me. And destructive for you know people that see me online it's just a question i have no idea what the truth is and ollie will be the only person who knows this when he says like losing loved ones because of the path he was going down was that to do with the korean and the k-pop direction or the trans woman direction i'm basically asking if did he lose people in his life because they were transphobic or was it before he came out as trans and it was for other reasons and it was like a whole big mixture of things because when he came out as a trans woman and that was why he lost loved ones and then detransitioned because he's sorry lost loved ones that feeds into the whole like detransition because of social stigma and i'm not saying that's what it is it's just like he can go into as much detail about it as he wants to but like when you're talking about it on this platform and you're like well i started to realize because i saw i was losing my loved ones what does that mean <laughs> was that because like they were calling out things you were doing that were genuinely wrong and destructive or were they transphobic and you started losing them once you came out as trans like it's kind of different were you trying um, to be a I role model i find that interesting 
No, I, 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 well, at the time, in my delusion, I thought I was a role model for people that liked K-pop and wanted to be um, a K-pop star. But, so then I started going to church to try and uh, take some time out to think about my life and think, you know, what is the next step for me? And then, you know, after spending some time going to church sessions and sermons, it made me realize, you know, just try to find acceptance with who I am and stop doing all this craziness and try to get back to the real me. And that's the most important thing. <laughs> You, I've heard you mention the real you, the real you being uh, a British man. But if you talk to other people, I think they might say the real them. And as as I think you would agree, people are born gay. They don't choose to be gay. Do you agree with that? Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. So then why? And I, agree, and I believe, sorry, I believe that some people generally feel trans since they're born. I do believe that. So, that, so God made them, them that born way. Trans. So God would have made them that way. I just believe that some people are born as trans, but my issue is kids being indoctrinated to transition when they didn't think about that before. So Oh, that's so confusing. So he's saying he believes that people are born trans, right? You're born trans. If you're trans, you're born that way. Just like if you're gay, you're born gay. Right? But then he's also saying, I don't think kids should be allowed to transition. I don't think trans kids should access gender affirming care. I think you should wait until adulthood. And I think that kids are being indoctrinated and they only think they're trans because they're being told they're trans by others. But then there's literally evidence placed in front of him saying, okay, but 99% of those kids who are transitioning don't regret it. And it is the right thing for them. 1% do. And actually among those 1%, a portion it's temporary regret and a portion they do detransition, not the whole 1% detransitions. That doesn't add up to me. So you're, you're actively, it sounds like actively asking people to suppress who they are until they're at an age that would please you and you feel is appropriate for them. However you're born, that's the way you, you feel, then that's okay. But I don't believe in people that wouldn't think about these things being indoctrinated to change. How would you ever think about something if you didn't know it existed though? I didn't think about being trans before I knew the language existed, but I did think about the fact that I was incredibly uncomfortable about the way people referred to me and saw me. I rejected anything feminine because of that discomfort. When I started going through puberty, I felt absolutely horrified. I did not realize that would happen. I I have memories of being four years old, just thinking I was one of the boys. I didn't understand the difference. And then when I did and I grew older and people were forcing me to be feminine, and fit into this like stereotype of being a girl, I was so ridiculously uncomfortable and I knew it wasn't right. I knew it wasn't me. I just didn't know the words. I didn't know it was okay for me to feel that way. Learning about being trans, it didn't put all of those feelings in me. It didn't, it didn't make me think that. It just literally gave me the language to know who I was and what I was experiencing and a pathway to feel better and live the life I'm meant to live. That was it. Because you said you want it. Because when you're on these shows, you kind of make a point about being like, I'm going back and I'm being true to myself, implying almost that like this trans thing is just some kind of silly uh, psychosis you had. But you're saying now being born trans is actually a state that God creates people in. I'm saying that some people are born trans, some people are born gay. Does God make people trans? I'm I'm not saying anything on that on that subject. Why? I'm just saying that some people feel everybody feels different. You know, everybody feels different. Wait, why size, are you not well, willing to say that God makes people trans? I'm just I know I'm just saying that people are born in different ways. They feel different. Some people might be born intersex. Some people are born gay. Well, you keep, well, you and talk they about God going back to how God or Jesus intended me. So I feel like this is an interesting point to resolve because this is something that you bring up in your interviews. God makes people trans. I find that. I find that to be. I never said. I, ne- I never said God made people trans. I never said God didn't make people Does trans. God make I'm just people saying gay? that. Does God make people gay? People are born gay. They don't choose to be gay. Do you agree with that? Yes. Okay. Yes. I'm saying that some people are born trans. Some people are Do, born gay. God... I'm just saying that people are born in different ways. Because you said it, you were born. You were born gay. And so I'm I was assuming... born. I wasn't born. I was born a man, and then as a teenager, I became gay. Um, So it didn't happen from birth, but I I struggled with my, I was very feminine. I struggled with my identity uh, as a kid. Um, Is that your choice or God's choice? This is really unusual because like, I I feel like religion is used a lot to share transphobic and homophobic viewpoints. And I've never heard somebody who both shares 
transphobic slash and or homophobic things ever say that like people are born trans or born gay and it's always like the message of god made you this way which is why you're not trans so it's like to attract like me a trans man i've been told so many times god made you a woman people aren't born trans so to have somebody being like yeah some people are born trans some people are born gay accurate true and then also believing in god and being christian and not stating that God makes people that way because I, th I thought that was part of the belief. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't know the most about it. I'm not religious myself, but it's just wildly different to the other things that I've heard anti-trans religious people say about trans people. I feel like maybe people within Ollie's echo chamber would potentially not agree with what he said. God is all powerful, but there are So then he made you gay too. and trans people trans. No, there why are would he make? Why would side. God all powerful make someone so confused that they wanted to be trans well actually logically it doesn't even make sense if god is all powerful and he creates a, a being and then this being lives through their lives and then says oh i want to transition god made them that way they if god is all powerful it's all part of his design god wants people to be trans well there are societal environmental god created society that, yes correct but so i'm just saying there yeah. are uh, there's a lot of even there's a lot of human factors that influence God created people. humans. You know, if, if people are yes, I know that, but if people are exposed to gender ideology, God they created gender ide ideology. Ethan's going off to one point. I, I see it, but at the same time, Ollie keeps going on about like social influences and like human and, and like environmental things. I feel like you can't just be like, yes, you're born trans. But I guess he's saying, oh, some people are born trans, some people are influenced to be trans. And then out of those people who are influenced by trans, it's like these environmental things like social media and stuff. That's just talking about rapid onset gender dysphoria, which, as I said earlier, is literally not a real thing. It was something that was conjured up based on the survey responses from 250 parents of trans and gender non-conforming kids who were recruited through websites such as Transgender Trend, which is very transphobic. So it's like parents that have sought out anti-trans websites, then they are recruited to take part in a study and they are asked about their kids gender dysphoria and they are not clinically able to diagnose that in their children or accurately report that about their kids and from that it was then deemed ah rapid onset gender dysphoria is a thing when actually that study was not hypothesis testing it was hypothesis creating there's the ability to now like ask a question is rapid onset gender dysphoria actually real but no there's been since studies that have shown it's not but it's caused so much damage and I know Ollie's not said ROGD or rapid onset gender dysphoria at all but like it is the idea of the social contagion and social influence thing, which he's talking about a lot. So what I'm saying is a lot of these people would not have felt this way when they're born, but they're being pushed by society. God created society to, to think that they're going to transition. God created society and transitioning as an operation. I mean, just tell where am I logically wrong? I don't see any logical conclusion that doesn't come to the idea that God made people trans. I never said God made anyone trans. I just said that society and the environment God made society. around people influence people. But if you believe that God is all-powerful and some people are born trans, then who did that? You said he's all-powerful? Yes, God is all-powerful, but also humans have influences on other humans. But he made humans. But this isn't going anywhere. <laughs> it's not, is it? Okay, let's go on. Um, do you believe that the Bible is against transgenderism or? I will just call out. I do think Ethan's doing a really good job in like most areas of this calling it out. But like, let's not ever use transgenderism in a serious way. It's something that is used to make it sound like being trans is a bad thing. It's always something I hear used by transphobes. And like transgender is an adjective. It's not like an ism. Like, just no, please don't. What's your thought on that as a, as, I guess, a newborn Christian? Well, you know, the Bible was written um, a long time ago, and there are things in the Bible, such as in the Old Testament, that aren't relevant to today's society. We know that. Um, so we have to adapt what was written 2000 years ago to the modern day. But, um, you know, I'm not I'm not one for policing how adults live their lives. But I think, you know, transgenderism wasn't in the Bible because there weren't trans people <laughs> visible there were trans back then. People. Of course. No, no. Look, I've even got this in my book, even there was a Roman emperor that was trans. He used to dress as a woman. So we know there's instances, but I'm just saying in the Did Bible society itself, society influence no him? We know there have been visible trans people throughout history and throughout different cultures. Like, it's not a new thing. It's not a social influence thing. It's just, 
It's just another way of being human that is now spoken about and we live in a different world now with social media so people are realizing it. They're realizing that's who they are. That's what's happening. Did society influence the emperor to be trans? Well, I wasn't alive then. Well, but, hold on. Um, you wrote would... about it in your book. God dang, man. Yes, but so so there were some um, Roman scholars that were around at the time and taken from their writings. He used to dress as a woman. He used to act like a woman and his wife would have to call him ma'am. Now, I, I wasn't around back then, so I don't know the exact details, but he thought he was a woman. So, you know, maybe he, he could have been born like that. Some people are born like that and they generally think that they're so in the wrong body. So you don't have an opinion on if the Bible supports transgenderism or not. Or, get, well, or, Bible or homosexuality, written, even. No, the Bible was written a long time well, ago. Well, yeah, then why, but, but surely, I mean, you know, uh, why use the Bible as a guide for anything in your life if, if it was written so long ago? I don't understand that point. Because, Ethan, because there's many teachings in the Bible that are very, very positive, uh, you know, about love and acceptance and kindness um, and trying to help humanity. Um, it was written a long time ago, so like I said, the Old Testament... I feel like being against a statement like protect trans kids is not helping humanity, just my opinion. Yeah, but I want to ask, um, you know, if we're talking about protecting kids, it all comes down to protecting kids, right? I mean, this is the thesis I've heard you explain. So as a Catholic, uh, do you, what do you think poses a greater threat, drag shows or clergy members? Well, actually, there's a lot of, of scandals and very bad things that have happened with the clergy. And, you know, I'm against all forms of abuse. So there's a lot that the Catholic Church has done in the past. There was even a cardinal that I believe he died um, earlier this year, an Australian cardinal that was uh, accused of some horrific things. And there's, it's, there's a lot of that going on as well. So that needs to be addressed. And I will call that out as well, as well as calling out drag shows that are sexualizing kids, because all forms of child abuse, whether it's in a church, whether it's in a religious organization, <laughs> Or, or whatever what would you, is wrong. If you had kids, would you feel more comfortable leaving them at a drag uh, time, story time, or with a clergy member? You know, if I had kids, I would actually be with them all the time. I wouldn't leave them anywhere. You would never leave them? No, because, you know, as a well, parent, hypothetically, you're like, you know, you don't have to do it. I'm just talking hypothetically. <laughs> would you leave, Would you feel more comfortable leaving them with a clergyman, uh, a member of the of the Catholic Church, or at the Bible, or sorry, the drag queen story time hour? Again, neither. I wouldn't want to leave kids it's not, anywhere. It's just a theoretical. It's just theoretical. No, no, I, I get that. But I'm just saying, I w even even if it was you know, leaving a right, kid... Right, but you have a, to choose one. Which one do you trust more? Well, I wouldn't leave my kid anywhere. Like, I wouldn't leave a kid. And I think parents have a duty to right, protect their kids. Right, but just theoretically, wh which kids. one would you choose? I, I'm not going to answer that because right. I wouldn't, I wouldn't you choose wouldn't. either. You wouldn't. So, I mean, he wouldn't leave his kid at school if he wouldn't leave his kid anywhere. That was just completely avoiding it. <laughs> Okay. Put it this way. There's a dude named Barry. He's got kids. And he goes, I have no choice. I have to leave my kids either with the clergyman or at the drag show. I don't have a choice. Something crazy is happening. They're right next to each other. He says, ah, where do I leave my kids? Where do you think Barry should leave his kids? Well, again, I wouldn't want to leave kids anywhere. But he do know, Barry doesn't have a choice. Is. He doesn't have a choice. He's in this horrible but, predicament. But Ethan, I'm not Barry. I can't answer that question. Well, he's asking Barry. you for advice. Quick, Ollie, where should I put my kids? <laughs> you put me on the spot. You know, I, I wouldn't, as an adult, like, I would say Ollie, to Barry, as a just Catholic, be with your kids. As a Catholic, I find it very concerning that you are hesitant to even answer that question. No, I'm saying it doesn't matter whether it's a, a Catholic church, a drag show, or even an, an after-school club where it's, you know, the teachers aren't present. I wouldn't leave the kid anywhere. I wouldn't leave the kid at some weekend activity, like a sports activity. I think the parents should always be there. Right. So it's not a question of a church versus, um, you know, whatever. It's a question of just, in general, parents should always be with their kids. I don't know any parent that could live up to that standard, ever. But that's not reasonable. Parents can't always be with their kids. I mean, that's... No, uh, no, of course. Of course, it's not always reasonable, but I'm just saying in an ideal scenario, you know, because uh, look, there are cases that, that happen, many cases that don't happen, but I'm just saying it's, you've always got to be careful because there are people out well, there that are Well, let's assume that you're a good Christian and you say, I'd leave them uh, with the Catholic Church. We've talked about the number of kids who are doing irreversible transitioning in America. It's very, very small. We're talking like 250 a year by my estimate. And that's based on government data. I know you you uh, dispute it. You know, there's mm -hmm. a recent report that came out 
in France, and the reason I bring this one up is just because it's the most recent and comprehensive one. Quite disturbing. Uh, this came out, I believe, in 2021, called the Independent Commission of, on Sexual Abuse in the Church. It uh, was a huge government uh, commission to look at this openly and honestly and try to figure out what's going on. 2,900 and 3,200 clergy members were involved in sexual abuse of minors during that period in France. It's estimated that they abused around 330,000 kids. Now, if you do a percentage of that, and this is really kind of surprising to me, and tell me what you think. Assuming there are around 15,000 to 20,000 clergy members in France at any given time, the, percent of, the percentage of clergymen involved in abuse of minors would be 15 to 20%. Yeah, that's absolutely horrifying. And also there's, in Ireland as well, there was a lot of abuse that was covered up. And no, it doesn't matter. Seems like that affects Catholic more church. kids. than No, the no that, than that the is directing. equally wrong. Whoever exposes kids, it doesn't matter whether it's a church or not Raping a Raping a kid is equally is as wrong as going to a drag show? Look, it's equally wrong if someone abuses a kid. So that's what I'm saying okay. here. So if a kid is being abused... Is there any history of a child wrong. being abused at a drag show? When when drag shows are sexually explicit, is that the that same as abuse. raping them? I, that is also child abuse. I'm just saying, if a, a drag queen performs a sexually explicit act in front of the kids, that is abuse. If we're worried about the kids, we're looking. You're a member of an organization, which, by my estimate, which again is just an estimate, uh, but 15 to 20 percent of the clergy members are sexual predators. Why is it that you're focused on the drag shows? and not the Catholic Church, when per capita and the volume is way more in the Catholic Church. Well, the, the specific organization, Gays Against Groomers, is focused solely on the issue of indoctrinating children and exposing them to sex. If it was called, you know, Catholics Against Groomers, that would be focused on that issue. Right. <laughs> By that logic, if they're talking about trying to, like, protect kids from like trans things, shouldn't it be trans people against groomers, not gays, by the logic that Ollie's just said? But it's a specific issue. Not every organization can focus on every issue, but their uh, job is to expose a specific issue within a specific group. And granted, like you said, there are in France, there was in Ireland some horrific cases. And, you know, it's the job of the Pope and the Catholic Church to vigorously investigate that because it's disgusting for any person uh, whether a clergy member or not to abuse a child is absolutely wrong and it should be investigated to the full and every single victim deserves It just deserves seems to justice. me a little disingenuous when you're going to point, let's say, you've got the whole hotel, a whole building, it's on fire, but in the backyard, there's like a dog house that's on fire. There's no dog in it, by the way. It's just a small structure. And you're telling the fire department, we need to put out the dog house fire. Don't worry about the massive apartment building that's on fire let's put out the doghouse to me that seems like you're focused on the wrong thing what's the point of focusing on the doghouse when the you know the whole building is on fire right well no i mean i talk up on my twitter about all forms of abuse if there's somebody that abuses a kid you know if it's a news story i do share on that so <laughs> but i'm just saying the specific organization gays against screamers focuses on a specific subject but you're right all forms of abuse are incredibly wrong and they should also get uh light shed on them 100 percent. are you interested in uh firearm deaths in, of kids because that's the leading death actually of kids in america today yeah that's absolutely horrific what we what we see every day with schools being shut up it's absolutely horrifying right but somehow the drag children, show no, children more... should be you know ethan we're on the same page i just children don't understand why the drag show is more pertinent because you're doing a tour right you're doing all the right wings you even wrote a book for pete's sake called gender madness why is this topic so important when we're talking about protecting kids and there's just these incredibly more pertinent issues, uh, you know, firearm deaths, the leading cause of death in kids, and you're talking about an organization with 15 to 20% of sexual predators, by my estimate. I just don't understand the focus on the drag show. Don't you think that the conservative movement is overly focused on transgender issues? Uh, well, I mean, there's, there's, uh, you've just highlighted there are so many different issues in the world. And, you know, I'm trying to focus on one specific issue that we have seen a rise in the last few years, uh, a very shocking rise, you know, 
But equally, the issue of kids in schools, that is horrific. Every kid should be protected and safe going to a school. Just like if a kid is at a church, they should be protected. No child should be getting abused. But, you know, I'm specifically focused on one subject right now because, you know, I've struggled with gender ideology. I've seen the trend. This is my but area It's like the of whole right wing uh apparatuses there is a general focus on trans people and like this massive hate and just attention pulling from everything else to be like oh trans people are the worst and at the same time it's like but the literal evidence states otherwise you're ignoring evidence to fight a fight that doesn't even exist and then ignoring the fights that actually need to be fought. It's like the whole argument about protecting cis women in women's spaces by not letting trans women in there when the literal evidence says that trans women pose no risk to cis women greater than other cis women do and the actual risk to all women is predatory cis men but the attention is getting pulled off that and being focused onto trans women being the problem when they're not just like people like ollie are saying the problem is social influence and gender ideology and that's what we need to protect kids from but then look here's evidence showing that kids don't need protecting from that but oh no let's ignore that and carry on anyway <sighs> on that isn't that odd i mean it just seems odd that the entire right wing apparatus is focused on trans issues do you find that odd why are they all so focused on trans issues well i mean they talk about a lot of other issues as well but what's happening at the moment is there is a lot that, of um right they talk about a lot of issues but i think we can all agree that that is uh that's kind of the most pertinent it, for them right even in it, polls it's a very, yeah even in polls people say uh, trans trans issues is the most important to them of conservatives why is that? Well, I mean, I mean, correct, because it is a very um, big subject right now, because we're seeing, you know, every day these um, news stories of, of children with horrific um, stories at gender clinics. We're seeing, you know, drag queens, uh, not all drag queens, like I said, but we're seeing drag shows where they're doing very sexually explicit things. And it's become a real recent phenomenon in the last few years, and it's rising every day. So the reason conservatives speak up is because it's a rising issue. They're trying to counter it before it gets even more out of hand, because, you know, we're seeing some very sad things. Uh, the Nashville police still haven't released the manifesto, but... They're making a big deal out of it because a marginalised community within society is getting a minimal level of respect, or was starting to, and, you know, gaining rights and living their lives and having access to appropriate healthcare. But people who don't understand it and don't like it were scared. So now are shouting about how much they don't like it and how wrong it is. It doesn't actually make it wrong. It just means some very hateful people are saying things very loudly and... Many people are jumping along with them and saying the same things, even though they're not true. When uh, Audrey Hale initially shot up that school, they said that uh, gender the person's gender ideology may have played a role. They believed there was... Oh, but um, that's silly. Because, I mean, that. a lot of the... Well, have I mentioned <laughs> that you're selling a lunchbox with a trans woman on it? I don't think you mentioned it, Ethan. No, I don't think you said it at all, actually. Okay. So how do you just... If I haven't mentioned it, how do you justify this? I've already, gone I've already gone through it. Oh, we have talked about it. Okay. I'm just curious. Let me look at the photos. I mean, this is definitely for kids. It's pretty small. I can't even fit like a little bread in it, barely. And like, look, how, <laughs> I mean, these blueberries look monstrous next to that. That's certainly for kids, right? <laughs> yeah. It's too small it's for just an a adult. Book. What's that? No, it's for anyone. Anyone that likes K pop. For anyone that likes K pop. But grown ups, I mean, my God, what are they eating for lunch? Five blueberries? No, I, I would kid. buy that because it's cute, you know. Oh, okay. As a, I think growing up like that. Loads Wait, of you would buy like a lunchbox with a trans woman on it? Why would you do that? It's a K-pop. It's an image of a K-pop. I would buy it because it's cute. You know, I like K-pop stuff. I love Korean culture. It's it's a cute K-pop lunchbox. Mm -hmm. But clearly, you're not going to be buying it. I, well, not just because I don't want to support you financially, like I said. Thanks. Do you think it's kind to tell a suicidal child that they can't transition? No, but I think adults have a responsibility to help that child's mental health support. So whether that's therapy sessions if a child is If a child is suicidal, do you believe it's okay for them to transition? Well, the, the problem with what you're saying is that's the argument that many gender clinics use to coerce parents to transition their kids. But you actually have to treat the real issues, which is maybe the kid is suffering from depression or they have struggles with other mental health issues. What do you mean the real issues? issues? No, but, the, but that does happen. Like there's, there's recognized comorbidity. But it's also very well evidenced that 
allowing kids to transition and be themselves leads to lower depression and lower anxiety and lower suicidal ideation and risk and things like that. It's uh, It just feels like Ollie has all of the results the wrong way around in these studies that are being discussed. And that's maybe why he's going, no, nope, I don't buy it. This is a real issue. Kids are suicidal because of their gender dysphoria. I mean, that's a real issue. But Ethan, what I'm trying to say is if you put a vulnerable kid that's already struggling with their mental health on very high doses of hormones or puberty blockers. Well, why is he mentioning the dose? What does that have to do with anything? They're put on a dose that is determined by a medical professional. It's not a very high dose. That's after they decide. This kid is, is suicidal. The only way to save their life, as you hear from a lot of people, is to help them transition. What is wrong with that? No, correct. You hear that a lot, but you, has it ever happened? Has a child transitioning ever saved a child's life? Well, you need to address the mental health issues if a kid is has it ever that saved way, a child's life? Uh, transitioning, yeah, yes. Of course, there will be cases where. So, if it saved happy. even one child's life, then where do you get off preventing this from happening? You say one child's all that matters. If you can admit to me that transition, a child transitioning saved their life, even one of them, why would you? support a movement that outlaws it you support legislation the, that makes it illegal why is that because firstly these are kids they cannot consent to this they do but not save understand their the long-term consequences but you don't look at what happens like later down the line even you like said, six uh, years uh, down uh, the line we got to stick on this point talking of six years down the line there was a study that followed kids five years down the line after they first started socially transitioning is in no no nothing permanent because as i said it would just be socially transitioning then a little bit later puberty blockers and then a little bit later even that's when hormones start getting discussed so at the point of like just socially transitioning nothing irreversible happening five years down the line 97 and a half percent of kids still identify as trans. So when we talk about that, are you saying that the two and a half percent are worth not allowing the access to the 97 and a half percent? You said that transitioning has saved a child's life. Let's no, forget no, about I'm all the other static. Let's forget about all the other static. Why is it that you would want to outlaw a, a medical procedure that saved a child's life? That's because not kind, is it? No, you have to support the kids' mental health, but you cannot put them on hormones. Do you believe that it should be illegal? Surgery. Do you believe that it should be illegal for kids to transition? I believe for medical transitions, it should be 18 plus, yes. Yeah. You are saying, on one hand, that transitioning saved the kid's life, and also saying that transitioning shouldn't be allowed until they're 18 plus. So The bills that are being proposed and passed and the discussions that are being had... It's not just about medical, it's about any kind of gender affirming care. They wouldn't have those people to go and speak to. These are the people that Ollie is aligning with, that they want all kinds of gender affirming care to be stopped. And in places where it's being pushed to be stopped for kids, that they're, that it's, that's not where it's going to stop. Because it's not about the age of the trans person, it's about the fact they're trans. This is a real situation, and let's say, even if it's just one kid, Let's let's stay focused here, Ollie. One kid saved his life. You're telling that kid you cannot get that procedure. That's correct? I'm saying that kids can't consent to this. Kids need better mental health support, so there should be a focus on 18 mental plus. health you're support. You're saying this kid cannot get the procedure transition. that saved his life. That's what you're I'm saying. saying that it should, I'm saying that 18 plus for all procedures on kids because kids cannot consent, so... They need mental health support instead. Like I said earlier on in this video, saying that kids cannot consent ever and just doing that as a blanket thing, that's a very deep point to make because trans-related medical care is not the only kind of medical care that kids receive and it's not the only kind of life-saving medical care that kids receive. I'm saying that there will be some kids that may feel better and feel like their life no, is no, being no, saved no, no, after no. that, but... They, you s agreed with me, Ollie, just a few minutes ago that transitioning has saved kids' lives. Oh, like, like anything in life, it can save lives, but also a lot of people... Like anything in life? What does that mean? A thing? What no, a lot of people will become later down the line because their body is completely messed up. Um, there are, you know, so many different issues with their health um, that they're not being informed about. So it's oh, is that like implying that people who have transitioned have messed up bodies? 
or just that if it's not the right thing for you, therefore it has messed up your body. I don't really know what angle that was going at, and one of them is very, very bad. You can't admit that access to trans healthcare is life-saving medical care, which it is, and that's what it has been found, and that's why it's available, and then say, oh yeah, but not until they're 18, and it should just be like mental health support, but what kind of mental health support? Because the people that Ollie's aligned with, most of them are calling for any kind of support for trans kids to be taken away, and it would be reparative therapy, which is basically conversion therapy. And I'm not saying that's what Ollie is saying specifically, but just that is what generally is being pushed by the kinds of people that Ollie is currently aligning with. 99% don't regret it. No, I'm just saying that it's informed consent. Kids can't consent. If well, a kid kids is can't, feeling can't, that way... Kids can't consent to anything. What are we doing? No, We're not allowing them to... Uh, kids can't consent to go to church. Kid can't consent to go to school. Kids can't consent to anything. We, we as parents, make the best decision we can for the welfare of the kid. Don't you agree? I mean, this whole idea of consent is kind of moot when you consider all the things kids do in their, li in their lives every day. Oh, it's like a, a little kid that wants to be a dinosaur. Do you suddenly give him a surgery? Do you like think that wanting to be a dinosaur is, is uh, comparable to uh, gender dysphoria, which is a known medical condition? I'm saying that some kids you go through You said it's like kids stuff. wanting to be dinosaurs, Ollie. I don't understand the comparison. I hate this comparison. There's so many. It's like, in my childhood, I wanted to be Batman. I wanted to be a frog. I'm so glad my parents did not force this upon me like they're forcing kids to be trans. Gender dysphoria is a real thing. There is scientific support, evidence, whatever you want to call it, supporting all of this stuff. Wanting to be a dinosaur, that's not comparable. No, that's clutching at straws. Well, no, it is. It's like some kids change their mind about certain things. They're not mature enough to make these decisions. Do so you think wanting to, to be a parents, dinosaur is comparable to uh, being uh, trans? I'm saying if a 10 year old kid dresses up as a dinosaur every day, they tell their dad they're a tyrannosaurus. Has that happened? Can you uh, cite that happening? I'm, you've been speaking about theoretical things. I'm speaking about. Well, no, 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 no. Well, we're talking about theoretical. Would you transition a child? We're talking about theoretical situations, but they are real happening in the real world. There are kids whose lives are being saved because, and this is the small amount of kids who undergo it, very small amount, that do it under doctors supervision and panels and stuff it's saving their lives this is happening okay people are not i don't as far as i know maybe you can correct me saying i'm a dinosaur i need to transition into a dinosaur yeah i've never heard of that happening what confuses me so much is people like ollie and people pushing this kind of messaging why do they think that they know better than the scientists, than the doctors, the medical professionals, the specialists, and the trans people themselves. You are sat there saying that you know better, you know what is best for trans kids more than all of this, more than all of the signs, more than all of the findings, more than all of the clinicians, more than all of the people that dedicate their lives to specializing in providing the best treatment for trans people and trans kids and the trans people themselves. People like Ollie think they know better than all of these people and that all of these people are wrong. That's really what it feels like is being said. No, I'm saying, yeah, the kids want different things. They don't understand or comprehend. I notice you're saying I'm saying a lot. You say things, but you don't like to uh, stay accountable to it. You say, no, I'm saying this. No, I'm saying this. No, I'm saying this. Why won't you give me definitive answers? Well, I'm, I'm equating it. You know what? It is the same. It's, if a child wants to be a dinosaur, you don't cut okay, off their okay, it's the same. body parts. It's, it's the same. It's the same as being... Gender... It's the same as medically transitioning okay. a child and giving them Good. surgery. <laughs> Good. I'm glad you said that. Gender dysmorphia is a known medical condition. Is there any literature about transitioning to be a dinosaur? Not that you know. <laughs> right. But you said it's the same. But clearly it's not, right? Because... No, I'm equating... Because transitioning is, a, a kid, is, a, is accepted I'm equating by a kid... Mm -hmm. Sorry, I'm equating a kid identifying in a different way. You don't just suddenly say, if a kid feels a certain way, oh, we're going to do this operation, we're going to give you hormones. Kids of course that doesn't happen, Ollie. Like that that, that doesn't happen. Do it as an adult. That doesn't happen. Gender-affirming, really life-saving care, which, by the way, happens only re irreversible gender care, uh, gender surgeries and stuff, only happens like 250 times a year. No, it doesn't. It happens. Well, you have no statistics to back that up.
Well, there's a clinic in Oregon. I can send you the statistics. Of, there's a clinic in Oregon that does at least 300 surgeries on kids a year. So that's just one that's clinic. That's impossible. Six, that's not true. There's 60 clinics in the U.S. that are pediatric. Oh, over years, over years. Yes, yeah, 60 kids. over years. So, but the, again, no, there's saying, 50 million kids in America, Ali. That's not a lot. But I'm saying there's 60 gender clinics that are performing these surgeries every single week across the country. So look it up and Let's see how say many. You're telling them no. you cannot have the antidote that's going to save your life. You can only do the therapy that I approve of. You can only do the therapy that I say is okay for you, Ollie. You went through this whole gender transition. Why do you deny people the journey that you yourself had? Because I had that journey as an adult. And even though I regret it, I was an adult. But kids cannot consent. So I'll say it again. Kids, kids can't not be consent any to anything. Kids can't consent to yes. anything. But Ethan, this is irreversible. We're not just No, it's about not. Something. Sometimes it's not. Most of the times it is reversible. And, no, and, when, and you... when it's not reversible, it's done under extreme care, under doctor supervision. Before it was Ethan, cute, it's... silly stuff about transracial and PTS and pop stuff. And it was just silly nonsense about uh, ra little racist stuff about Korean people having tiny penises. But now you're, you're actually delving into transphobic, violent transphobia that is going to result in kids dying. You're going to have to reckon with that, Ollie. No, uh, absolutely not. You're trying to paint me out as saying I'm this. Only I'm only saying to say what that you kids said. Cannot consent. No, Ethan, kids I'm not can't saying consent that. to anything. The American Institute of Psychiatry and Kids Health Pediatrics, they all agree that the correct care for children with dysmorphia is gender-affirming care. Do you know more than Pediatrics Association and Psychiatrists Association? Yeah, because all of these you companies, do know more. they made two point they made two point two billion dollars. No. The list of, uh, like, I will show on screen just a portion of the list of the boards and the organizations that support gender-affirming care for kids. Is that saying that all of them are only doing it for money and all of them that support all of the other kinds of treatments for everything else and the other kind of medical conditions, they're only doing that for money as well? Is medicine purely based on money? Because like I said, that doesn't work in countries where there's a national health service and free health care. We see the same pattern with transitioning and trans kids and referral numbers in the countries with free health care. We also see the same support for gender affirming care in these countries with free health care. It's a ridiculous argument that people used to fall back on to actually have something to say when really they're just spewing transphobia. Like, I'd have more respect if people could just sit there and go, yeah, do you know what, I'd, I just don't think people should transition. I don't have a legitimate reason for it. I understand it causes harm, if that's what you're saying. I don't want to believe the stats you're sharing with me, but I just don't want it to happen. And that's it. If people said that, obviously that's not my opinion. If people said it like that, it's still horrendous, but I'd almost respect it more because at least you're not spending like two hours or whatever just going around in circles. So people make money from it. So therefore, we shouldn't let kids save them their lives. No, you can provide. I'm, I'm not going to keep going on about the same thing. You can provide kids with the right mental health support that doesn't include putting them on harmful hormones that can cause irreversible issues. And when they you're right, we adults, should make it free. People shouldn't be charged for it. No, I'm just not going to keep going on about the same thing, Ethan. I want to tell you something. You really have sold your soul in this one. You know what I mean? Like before it was Ethan, cute I and innocent, but this new one is people. really sick. And I mean, the Ethan. goals of you to sell a lunch pail with a trans person on it while telling people that they're grooming kids i mean you're just a hypocrite dude you know when you're trying to criticize for me for certain things so, you know you've also said some things that are very harmful as well, well hold so on to take accountability so, so you're admitting that what you say about trans people is offensive no i'm talking well, about how is my it comparable to what i said been harmful. i'm talking about my past behaviors you know have been harmful. I'm not I'm talking about your past behavior. I'm people. talking about what you're doing now that endangers children. Now, no, I'm helping people, Ethan. You're helping Tucker Carlson spread propaganda and you're selling a book called Gender Madness. How long have you been detransitioned? And you're writing a book already? It's been seven months. I mean, you were trans Ethan, I... for years. How are you going to spend seven months as a man and then presume to tell people how to live their lives? That's doesn't even make sense, Ollie. That's not enough time to give me an informed decision about what it means to transition, especially when you lived as well, a trans person for yeah. so long. Yeah, but the book is about my how I got to where I was, what led me to that, and how people struggle with different identities. It's actually a self-help book, so it's very positive 
empowering about madness. different ways people can help themselves. Gender madness. Here's your best friend, Jamie Mitchell, who's the founder of uh, Gays Against Groomers, supporting, um, well, here, just What's watch. What's happening now would make, you know, I think Joseph Mengele, uh, I believe that was his name, you know, the Nazi doctor, um, he, you know, this puts him to shame. They are, Do you believe that's an appropriate analogy? Well, uh, Joseph Mengele tortured and uh, performed medical, horrific medical procedures on kids. No, what Jewish they're doing kids today, the he, Holocaust. He also, uh, he also committed it's, a genocide against trans people, by the way. He committed a genocide against trans people as well. He killed well, these jokes LGBT about the people. Holocaust are off the limit. Jolly, let's be consistent. They are basically using an entire generation How dare you? of children as lab rats for this sick ideology um, and she sounds their like him right now. Like any of you know, yeah, even like any abuse of kids, and an, and any experimentation on kids is wrong. Um, and a threat to that. Any experimentation on kids is wrong, but like it's it's a medically approved treatment. Do you believe that doctors are performing Nazi like uh, experiments on trans kids? Doctors are are experimenting on kids. To what end? Know, what is the experiment? Of, any medical mutilation on kids is bad and you know the experiment the underlies data, a thesis what is their thesis i'm saying there's no long-term data on how does this affect a yes kid there is 99 percent don't the regret it how does this affect a kid 20 years down the line because they're happy 99 percent are happy we see issues 27 with studies density. look at the study by dr bradley canadian she was the pioneer for uh, performing these gender affirming cares on kids what if i told you that dr bradley was a quack well, uh, they're all quacks. Anyone that oh, experiments okay. on kids in the first place is a quack. I'm simply speaking up about we shouldn't do this to kids. I know you're trying to make the argument that this can lead to... It's not happening to kids, Ollie. It's 250 a year. It's not 250 yes, it a year. thousands of thousands You're just kids. making that up. That's bullshit. No, you can look on Google. People I've looked up every single thing you've said. I fact-checked every single thing you said. It's all propaganda. It's all lies. But look at I've Dr. systematically dis dismantled every single point you have but you can look at dr gallagher in miami and see how many operations she does on kids that's just one clinic there are 60 clinics plus that are doing this so imagine every single clinic added up they're profiting from this it's seventy thousand dollars they make from a girl all right ollie boy. london going at the money again but like from what i can gather the gallagher surgeon does one a month on under 18s that's 12 per year, 12 times 60 is 720. But like from what I can find, Ethan's numbers are supported, but that's still not thousands. And Gallagher's the one that has made news because people think that she's doing it too much or whatever. Like, you can't just say it's no, it's thousands and not have anything to back it up. So I've been saying about we need to give mental health support instead of putting all of these kids on Gender the Gender affirmation anyway. is mental health support. We'll agree to disagree, and um, good luck. Okay, you're a demon. The video is done, yay! That means this video is nearly done. Well done if you stuck through it to the end. Part of gender affirmation, part of gender affirming care is mental health support. And I was like, where's Ollie going with like saying mental health support constantly? Because the people that he's aligned with and the people that have these kind of views don't want kids to access any kind of gender affirming care which also includes like therapy counseling socially transitioning and then right at the end he disagreed with ethan that mental health support is part of gender affirming care so what kind of mental health support is he talking about because it doesn't sound like the gender affirming type of mental health support anyway that was a heavy watch that was fascinating and honestly is a prime example of the weakness in transphobic arguments trans people exist people are born trans meaning trans kids exist trans kids deserve to have access to the appropriate gender affirming healthcare, the medically evidenced and scientifically evidenced healthcare that is appropriate for them and for all trans people there's all this talk about like kids can't consent to gender affirming care they can't consent to these things oh it's exhausting. Gender affirming care isn't easy to access. When it is accessed, the regret rate is incredibly low. Incredibly low. And furthermore, saying that kids can't consent and therefore should not have access to things that irreversibly change them before they're an adult, that's puberty for you. It goes back to the whole point of you are trusting cis kids and you are not trusting trans kids. And if anybody's forcing any kids to go through irreversible changes that aren't right for them, it's people who are taking away gender affirming care. So Ollie barely directly answered any questions at all. And when he did, 
he'd often backtrack on his answers, say something different later on the line. I think there were multiple responses where he said like two to five different things and changed his answer as Ethan gave more information and called out his previous answer. There were multiple things where he was just saying, you're clutching at straws. No, that's not true. And just repeating the same thing over and over again. And it's like, there is no substance to this. He's just sat there going, I have been told this, I have believed it, and although you're presenting me strong contradictory evidence, I am choosing not to pay attention to that, and I'm choosing to believe that it is only like that because it's purely biased, and it's not actually factually correct, so I'm not going to look into it. Well, actually, if you do look into it, you realise that the people who are wanting to stop gender-affirming care don't know what they're talking about, don't pay attention to the actual statistics, and are not doing what's in the best interest of trans kids and also it's not even about trans kids just like it's not about women's rights when people want to kick trans women out of women's spaces it's just all about transphobia and it will build up and up and up we've already seen some places try and stop trans healthcare being accessible for people under 26 years of age. They're not kids. It's not gonna stop. This is a way to get some people on the fence onto the transphobia bandwagon and it's gonna keep going. It doesn't have anything to do with protecting kids because if it really did then people would pay attention to the actual facts of the matter and what actually is in the best interest of trans kids. Ugh. Thank you so much for sticking with this video. Video. Let me know what you think down below. Yeah, as always, thank you so, so much for watching. I'm off for a nap. Much love. Bye.